Nighttime in Raleigh, North Carolina. Prime time for the pack tonight as they take on an undefeated Liberty Flames team. 8-0 on the season, number 21 in the nation. The Wolfpack 2-1 at home this year at Carter-Finley Stadium. And that includes a win a week ago against Florida State. But today they take on number 21 in the nation. And this presentation of ACC football is presented by your local Ford dealer. The Wolfpack just about set to take the field. We will have about 4,000 fans or so in the stands. Dave Dorn will lead them out against Hugh Freeze and the Liberty Flames. It's just the second all-time meeting between the teams. They played here back in 2011. That was a win for the NC State Wolfpack. And it is so great to have you with us for our game this evening. James Bates, Tom Wormy, Kelly Curl will be on the sidelines, and we'll check in with her in just a moment. We've got the protective glass between us. Nothing between the teams tonight. Number 21 is in town. This is the fifth-ranked team this season for NC State. And for Liberty, James, they're 2-0 against the ACC, but the bottom line is we are so thankful to be playing college football tonight. I hear you, partner. How about that? Both of these teams getting ready to play their ninth games of the season. Just today, we had 15 FBS games postponed or canceled. FSU and Clemson was canceled this morning. We didn't get to call a game last weekend because our Pitt-Georgia Tech game was canceled. So you know what? Hats off. We're here. We're playing football. It's, I'm just excited to be here. But that said, I don't think we should just give them each, each team a COVID. Cup say go home with your trophy. I want to watch them duke it out. This is really going to be a fun matchup tonight. What a run it's been for the Liberty Flames, but let's take you back and take a look at the timeline to when Hugh Freeze is announced as the head coach in December of 2018. He'd previously been at Ole Miss from 2012 to 2016. In their second season in the football bowl subdivision, first season that they were eligible to make a bowl, they went eight and five and won the 2019 Cure Bowl over Georgia Southern. That was considered to be one of the best seasons in school history, but we fast forward to this year. Two wins over ACC opponents. They beat Syracuse at the Dome in mid-October, and then the wild finish against Virginia Tech. Those schools separated by just 85 miles, 38-35 on Alex Barbier's 51-yard field goal in the closing seconds. 8-0 for the first time in program history. And on a 10-game winning streak, that is second best in the football bowl subdivision. And the big reason they've been so successful this year, their quarterback, the transfer from Auburn, Malik Willis. Yes, sir. Number seven is 7-0 seven and oh as a starter. He started every game but one this year. You see his, the uh, bandage on his left elbow, banged up left elbow against Northern Alabama. Hasn't bothered him too much. Non-throwing hand. He's big. He's strong. He can run. And he he runs, he scrambles to throw. Unlike De'Eric King, who will scramble a little bit, and then he's 88 and out the gate. And, you know, Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator for NC State, the Hurricanes came to town a couple weeks ago. He said, this guy, Malik Willis, he's the best quarterback we've seen all year. I'm excited to watch him here. Yeah, that was a wild game against Miami, a loss for NC State at home. Now, for more on the NC State quarterback, let's go to the sidelines and Kelly Kroll. It appears the third time may be the charm for Bailey Hockman, who started two games last season after transferring from Florida State and then started the first two games this season when the pack's number one guy coming into the fall, Devin Leary, was quarantined to begin the 2020 campaign. And then Leary, a few weeks ago, down with injury. So Hockman has been under center for the last three games, has increased his yardage, touchdown passes, and his completion percentage from game to game. And in speaking with the coaches this week, you get the sense that they really feel like he has turned a corner and started to settle in. And if familiarity plays a role, this will be his third straight game on his home turf, a 7:30 kick. Now that's a different story for Liberty. This will be their first game under the lights this season. And the players will tell you that's really not a big deal, but head coach Hugh Freeze joked that this is almost past his bedtime, guys. He likes to pack it in around 8 p.m. So that's why he likes those early kicks so much. But the key for him, not a midday nap like I know you two took today, but rather he's going to turn to the energy drink, which he really doesn't like. But he said, hey, I got to be at my best, so I'll find a way to do it. Kelly, thank you. Whatever it takes to be ready for the game tonight. And yes, I'll be totally transparent. Did catch that quick nap in the afternoon to get ready for tonight's game. Here's your weather forecast. Raleigh, North Carolina. 
clear skies, temps in the mid 50s, very light breezes. I would have to say, James Bates, it's a perfect night for college football as Dave Dorn and the Wolfpack step out of conference, five and three in conference play. First non conference game, they're two and one at home for Coach Dorn in his eighth season with those 52 wins. That's tied for second most in school history with Dick Sheridan. Liberty won the toss, elected to defer. So NC State will get the ball first. Barbier to kick it away. A couple of yards deep in the end zone, and it's not coming out. Bam Knight elected to stay in the end zone. So first possession for NC State. And it's quarterback Bailey Hockman. Had to come on in relief in the game against Duke, a victory for NC State when Devin Leary was injured. And so Hawkman has been at the controls since that point, James, for this NC State Wolfpack attack. Two and three as a starter, or three, uh, two and three, all three losses have come against ranked opponents. Here's number 21. Can he get his first win of the season against a ranked team? From the 25 for the pack to get it rolling. Bouncing off of tacklers, Ricky Person Jr. Keeps the play alive, gets out near the 40. He's got first down yardage on the very first play for NC State for the junior from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Quite the one-two punch. If you haven't seen a lot of the Wolf Pack this year, Ricky Person and Bam Knight. Hockman escaping the pocket. Sails that one out of bounds into his own bench. Closest receiver was C.J. Riley, number 19. Person had that first down run on the first play against Wake Forest. He rushed for 99 yards and a couple of TDs, and he threw a touchdown pass to Devin Carter in that win against Wake Forest. That was way back on September 19th to get the season started. So go with Knight. Crashes into some Liberty defenders. Time now for our Toyota Impact players. NC State on offense, Liberty on defense. Well, Bam Knight didn't get a chance to run one back there. He downed it in the end zone, but won 100 yards. Kickoff return against Miami. He'll do some damage on the offense as well. And Darrell Johnson, the defensive end, big-time playmaker for Liberty. Watch out for him. We'll see if he can get active right here on a third down and long. And there he was. Right on cue, a little bit too antsy, and so give him a free five. It won't quite be enough for a first down, but it'll be third and short. Jeff Flanagan is our referee tonight for the second meeting all time between Liberty and NC State. So that's going to bring up third and short. It's been a strong suit for NC State this season. 45% third down conversions. That's fifth in the ACC. Significant shrinkage because of the penalty. And now a third and two. Well, Johnson, who had two sacks and a couple quarterback hurries against Western Carolina. A little bit jumpy. Knight absorbed the initial contact and then out to midfield, James, and it looks like he's got first down yardage. Damn Knight, he can run through you, can run around you, can, can leave you in the dust as well. Had him dead to rights a couple guys in the backfield, but just keeps on churning the sophomore out of Bailey, North Carolina. A little bit more want to an attitude run, as Dave Dorn likes to call those runs. He said, that's the offensive line. They feed off of runs like that when Ricky Person and Bam Knight bring those attitude runs to the house. 413 yards of total offense in the win against Florida State a week ago. Hockman pressured out of the collapsing pocket. First down and more near the 30 for Hockman on the scramble. Forced out by Scruggs, number one in white. Big pickup for Huckman. Big play. The receivers blocking downfield and guys back there. There's Johnson again. Guys got to make a play when they're back there. A couple times already they've whiffed when they've had opportunities to stop the backs and now Huckman for a no gainer. Instead, it's a great big play and here's movement. That previous play went for 20 yards on the Huckman run. Offside. Defense. Defense. Number 24. Five yard 
one penalty, first down. And the time is Washington over there, so just helping the offense out on the opening series here, and it's it's something they haven't had a lot of problems with. They've had some problems with turnovers this Liberty team has, not so much on the penalty front. On first and five, Person Jr. trying to turn that corner, put the shoulder down, collided with the defender. Haskins near the 20-yard line. They may mark him just inside that. It is a first down, five yards on the play. Haley Hawkman leading an offense that Scott Simons, the defensive coordinator for Liberty, said is the best offense that we'll see all year. And remember, a couple weeks ago against Virginia Tech, they didn't feel like they could stop them. Hawkman, time to look. Has to run to his left, running out of real estate, and he throws it out of bounds. Pressure from Treshawn Clark, number 10 in white. And Bailey Hawkman, wise decision to get rid of that football. So Hawkman last week, James, 265 yards passing, three TD passes. And he completed 24 passes, all career highs. Did have a rushing TD as well. And threw just the one interception in the win, 38-22 against the Knowles. Well, caught one and ran it in. Into the line with Person. That's only a yard. Henry Chibuzzi on the stop for Liberty. So now third and nine for Coach Dorn and the pack on its opening possession. They are in the red zone, right near the 19 of Liberty. Sixth in the conference in red zone offense. Looking for the conver conversion on third down. Hockman stands tall, throws it into a congested area, and it got deflected away at the 10, looking for C.J. Riley. And Meganson, number four, got a hand on it. It's fourth down for NC State. Well, you see so Powell in there. Good break, the former wide receiver out of Fort Lauderdale, Piper High School, watching those eyes. Breaks up on that short route and almost has an interception, almost turned into a wide receiver and took it the other way. Instead, here comes one of the better field goal kickers in the nation. Christopher Dunn has hit a couple from 53 in his career. So Dunn from 37 yards away. 8 of 10 on the season. And Dunn misses. Misses from 37 yards away. So NC State had a chance at points. Dunn... Just outside the upright. No score in the first. Back in Raleigh. Evening game for the Flames and the Wolfpack. Opening drive for NC State to come up empty after the miss from 37 yards away from Christopher Dunn. And now we get a first look at Malik Willis. How about his last three games, James? 16 touchdowns, 12 passing, four rushing, and a 68% completion for Willis. Yeah, only one interception on the season, but he has been known to put it on the ground way too many times. Two fumbles in the first half against Virginia Tech. Had a couple last week against West Car Western Carolina. And, and a lot of it is just, just wanting to get a few extra yards out of it and trying too hard, and he loses... The security of that football. He's got to take care of the football tonight. They can't give NC State any freebies. Willis 7 0 is a starter this season. Over 1,600 yards passing, 700 yards rushing, both tops on the team. They'll go up the middle past the 25 yard line with Joshua Mack, number eight, the senior. Six yards on the rush for Mack. Yeah, if this is your first look at a Hugh Freeze coached Liberty Flame team this season, 
do not adjust your television. This is, uh, it's not the same warp speed that you're used to in days of old. Not this season anyway, not the last few games anyway. He's got it in there, but for the most part, when he goes up against teams, when he feels like the, the rosters don't equal out, he, he wants to make sure he maximizes all those offensive possessions and eats up that clock a little bit more than he did in the past. Second and three for Liberty with Mack. It's only to about the 26 and officially no gain for Joshua Mack, senior from Pittsburgh, New York. If only we had on those glasses like Joshua Mack. They're so <laughs> thick that he can see the future. We would know what's going to happen here tonight. Boy, he's been great pounding that football behind a big physical offensive line. Really big bodies on both of these lines, offensively and defensively, for Liberty. Let's see what they got third and three. They're going to try to run it very close to the marker at the 30. Just trying to move that pile. And do they have enough on the play after Mack took it up the middle? Mack played two seasons at Maine as over... 3,300 career rushing yards when you combine his years for the Black Bears. And that is a first down to the 30. First down for the Flames from their own 30-yard line. Malik Willis. Quick pass. And that is complete to C.J. Yarborough, who had to go down and get that one. Cecil Powell made the stop on Yarborough as we check out our keys to the game, brought to you by your local Ford dealer with James Bates. Well, Liberty fans want to know, am I only dreaming, or is this burning? Is it an eternal flame? Are we here to stay? Can we make it 3-0 and against the ACC? They've got to be consistent. They've got to take care of that football and express yourself. NC State, not the NWA version, the Madonna version. We're going 80s uh, female <laughs> bands. But express yourself. Tuffy, just the attitude that they have on that offensive line, those attitude runs that we saw from guys like Bam Knight early in this game. They've got to get nasty tonight. Five-yard penalty. Second down. See, one thing, the, the first few plays, Hugh Freeze's offense showed that, that they, can, they can run it. They can push a little bit. But it's chipping away. They're... Against Syracuse, they had some, some big home runs on the ground, big 70-yard, 50-yard runs. You can't expect those, but you also can't go backwards with these momentum killer, these, these little five-yard penalties, and expect to come in here and win. Willis escapes the pocket. Flag came out behind the play. Willis still upright and now trying to fight his way to about the 34-yard line or so. Ran into Isaiah Moore, but again, a flag behind the play. So the five-yard penalty against Liberty. That's going to be their fourth penalty of this quarter. Well, you mentioned it, Tom. It came out behind the play, and it seemed like a, a good deal behind. Daniel Joseph was the pack player who got held. They see 99, James. Yeah, there you see it. It wasn't on the front end, which could have been called, but the, the back end where you reach out and grab the jersey when you're trying to run away from them, that's going to get called every single time, so a good call, but unnecessary. The, your quarterback, Malik Willis, was already out the gate heading the other way. So now you're looking at second down and 22. From its own 18-yard line for Liberty. Willis steps up. Just flicks it at the very end of the play, incomplete. That went through the hands of Joshua Mack. Willis had to improvise. Peyton Wilson charging fast for the pack. Good job to bottle him up. Not only Willis, but Mack as well there, this NC State defense. That wouldn't have gone for much, even had Mack been able to hold on to it. So a third and 22, most importantly for Liberty. Hang on to that football. Everybody looked to be dropped back here. A three-man rush coming. 
47% of the season on third down. This is third and long. Willis got rid of it. Incomplete. Beyond the 35-yard line, Johnny Huntley couldn't handle the pass, and it's fourth down for the Flames. Well, nice job by this Wolfpack defense. We're going to bring three. Peyton Wilson's back there as a spy. Keep everything in front of you on a third down and 22. Would have been well short. Break up on it and make the stop. So a, an excellent job defensively by NC State. As for Liberty, these little things, these football things, you're not 8-0 by missing tackles and by dropping footballs. They need to catch their breath a little bit and relax. Low punt to Thomas. He'll watch it bounce. Takes a Liberty bounce inside the 30-yard line off the foot of Aven Alvis. And Aiden Alvis with the punt. NC State will have it after the 55-yard punt from Liberty. Welcome back to Raleigh, where we're scoreless in the first quarter. And the Wolf Pack tonight honoring the efforts of its student athletes and their quest for social justice and change. NC State Athletics is very proud of the Pack United Initiative, which has been led by student athletes and the Student Athlete Advisory Committee since its beginning in late spring. This march here, led by linebacker Isaiah Moore and center Grant Gibson, was in September, and those two have been driving forces behind this movement. Pack United encourages NC State student athletes to use their platform to push for change, focusing in areas of awareness, action, and education. And guys, we spoke to Isaiah Moore earlier this week. And he said, you know, a big thing for him was his legacy off the field as well as on it. And he thinks he's making a change, certainly, with this initiative. Absolutely, Kelly. His eyes lit up when we talked football early on, and then... We brought it up to him, and, and, and he was, he's very proud of being able to lead this team. Dave Doran, very important to him and his coaching staff as well, what they're doing here in Raleigh. Second and six over the middle, complete. 40-yard line and more for Donovan Knight. Donovan Knight goes up near midfield to the 50 as Anthony Butler made the tackle for Liberty. Well, do it all quickly over the ball for those sticks move 18 yards on the previous play another pass completely out of 40 but this time it's Devin Carter number 88 there's a little bit of that warp speed that we used to watch Hugh Freeze run quite a bit of and they go fast here that's for sure Tim Beck's offense has been a big big step up big flag down here though Hockman got it inside the 30, but again, a flag came out behind the play. Haskins on the tackle of Hockman on the scramble. Holy, holy, offense over 71. 10-yard penalty, second down. Skullthorpe. See if you can see him there on the left, working on Elijah James. Absolutely. You know, it... They, they've called a couple of those early, and as a defensive guy, I like it because you watch college football on any Saturday, and there is tons of holding, tons of plays like that that they don't call. So they just got to be consistent the rest of this game. If they're going to call it now, they got to call it throughout. So rather than a first down, it's first and 20 rather than the first and 10. Hockman looking left all the way, and it's incomplete near the 45 yard line. Mecca Mezzi was the intended target, the senior from Waxhaw, North Carolina. Back there with him was Treadwell, number nine. Well, Mezzi has caught a pass in 28 straight games. That would have been 29. He has had a couple drops as well, though. I'll watch it in, even in that traffic there. And that was threading the needle. Ball was on the money, but goes to the ground. So a second and 20 coming up. Yeah, Mezzi with 153 career reception, sixth in school history. Hockman just got that one away near the sideline, and it is taken in. Angeline makes the catch inside the 35 of Liberty. Boy, how about this concentration? Again, you're going to have another defensive back break under, trying to go for that interception. I don't think this one's going to stand. Nice play on the ball. It's come underneath by Javon Scruggs. Failed with a completed pass. The play is under further review. If it does stand, it would be a 16-yard pickup and a catch for Kerry Angelon. Scruggs was defending on the play, James. Well, he's going to come underneath 
can get a hand on it and bobbling looks like he has control there. We'll have to come back and check it. Your local Ford dealer. And Z-Max Micro Loop. Available at Advanced Auto Park. About 4,000 fans allowed into the stadium under the health and safety guidelines of the state of North Carolina. One more look at the catch, or was it a catch, James, by Angeline? Well, I think it's one of these where if you pieced it all together and spent about an hour, uh, that, we don't that, that you could of maybe time. say it was incomplete. <laughs> I don't think he caught it, but I think it will stand. I, I think every look that we have at it, every angle, something important is blocked. It will stand. Again, you must have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, which on the field was catch. So 16 yards on the play. Angeline makes the catch, and we spot the football at the 34 of Liberty after the play. Again, how about the concentration by Angeline? Looked that ball in after Scruggs came raking through the wrists, but still, you've got four yards to go here, and what probably could be four down territory. Third and four. And they will not get that. Treshawn Clark makes the tackle on third down for the Flames. I'm going backwards here. It didn't look like Hawkman was running out there to throw that football. It looked like... He had it tucked the whole way and expected to have a little bit of room. A good job there by stepping up and taking on that lead blocker to stuff it in the backfield, Darrell Johnson. And here's the punting unit. So again, a good job by Liberty of keeping NC State in front. Got a little help from the penalty. Make them earn it all. Trenton Gill on the punt. Douglas is the deep man. This one bounces inside wow. the five. And the signal is touchback. So the ball must have broken the plane down there, James, because in college football, you can be in the end zone, provided the ball does not break the plane. Oh, what a shame. Can't get any better. Oh, that's a good call, though. We don't have the... Houston was in the end zone. Now, the, the first guy's down there. You, you've got to find that... You've got to find that goal line. Put your heels on the goal line. If, if Houston's heels are on that goal line, he can react and go keep that ball out. Instead, he's into the end zone a couple yards. So it was a great punt. But the rest of the guys, in these, the, the punt block and the punt teams have been pretty good for NC State, but they missed one right there. So Liberty will start at the 20. Malik Willis, the quarterback. The running back is Pickett. This is Willis. Out of bounds past the 20 yard line or so. Isaiah Moore on the tackle for NC State. Good job by Moore on a tough guy in the open field. Nice angle. Go take him down. Isaiah Moore, 12th in the ACC with just over seven and a half tackles a game. His partner there at the linebacker spot, Peyton Wilson, by the way, almost 11 tackles a game. And that's good enough to lead the ACC. Wilson had a couple of interceptions in the last visit we had here. In the win against Duke. This is Willis trying to improvise. And now he wisely keys that one into the NC State bench. Pressured by Peyton Wilson, the aforementioned Wilson number 11. As we take a look at your impact players, James, it's presented by your local Toyota dealer with Liberty on offense and NC State on D. All righty, a lot of grass today until Willis is back. Johnny Huntley, the big tight end, we haven't seen him yet, but he's been a big playmaker for this Liberty offense. And Tanner Engel, boy, is it good to get him back at that safety spot. A very young secondary. A lot of injuries there in the secondary. And when you've got a guy that can break it and go to the house like Malik Willis, it sure helps to have number 10 back there. The junior from Orlando, Dr. Phillips High School. He's been one of my favorite players to watch in the ACC over the last few years. On third and nine for Willis and the pass is too high. Tried to throw it out on the edge to Noah Frith. Incomplete, fourth and nine. Liberty has to punt. Willis trotting off the field after throwing four touchdown passes a week ago in the win at home against Western Carolina, 58-14. 
accuracy had been an issue with Willis when he first got in here as he misses high on that one. Offensive coordinator Ken Austin spent a lot of time, and they feel like they've really cleaned it up. Not the case right there, though. Thomas backtracking for the fair catch. So Thayer Thomas makes the play. There is a flag. 45 yard punt, but there is a flag. personal foul. Number 22 defense leaping the punt shield. That pill is 15 yards from the previous spot. On the first down. That's Max Fisher. He used to be able to do this and just it's, it's all about player safety and, and it's about his own safety. There you see 22 landing on his head. Luckily, he pops up okay, but the damage is done via the penalty. And it's a fresh set of downs and the ball back in the hands of Malik Willis and this Liberty offense. It really has felt like a little bit of a, of a mismatch early on in this first quarter. N NC State should have the upper hand, but unable to, to finish a, a few drives. A couple penalties that really have cost them in the missed field goal, of course. So Willis gets another chance and he'll hand this one off. You recall, James, that Fisher had a block punt that led to a touchdown return in that win against Duke a few weeks ago for this NC State team. But the penalty on the punt, giving the ball back to the Liberty Flames. Well, Levi Jones had one. I mean, they, they have been a, a punt blocking machine, and they've also been a really good return team, averaging 17 yards of return. Thayer Thomas, but not the case right there, hurting their football team in the third phase right there in that attempt. Willis with the time. Tried to put a little mustard on that one. It's behind the intended receiver, Peyton Pickett, incomplete. And very quickly now, third down. Willis 68% passing coming in. He's he, he's got to calm down. It, it, this is a the, a the football team as a whole needs to just calm down, take a deep breath. Just off the mark again for a guy you mentioned he had the time and another wide open receiver but throws it well behind him. So a third down and eight. We'll see what NC State chooses to do here. It looks like they got a couple guys walked up. They'll bring them back now. Now they'll walk them right back up. Wilson is showing blitz. Willis has thrown five straight incompletions. This time, he'll do it with his legs. First down yardage, carving his way into NC State territory and near the 42-yard line. Malik Willis on the run as Harris and Dawkins had to combine on the stop for Willis. Well, the blitz is going to come from that right side of the defense, and here goes that tempo, a team that's, that's been just creeping along at a snail's pace for... The last couple of weeks quickly over that football and forcing a timeout by NC State because they couldn't get set and couldn't get substituted. There's there's a nice gain as Hugh Freeze talks to his quarterback by Malik Willis. The blitz couldn't get there and they didn't, weren't in their rushing lanes up at the middle. So Willis went for 22 yards on that run and for more on Willis down to the sidelines and Kelly. Well, guys, that tuck and run by Malik Willis right there is a great example of what defensive coordinator Tony Gibson was telling us when week one, he happened to be in a hotel room, flipped on the channels, watching a little football, and there's Liberty playing Western Kentucky, and he remembers stopping to watch the game for a moment and said he got sick to his stomach when he saw Willis take off a few times. He thought to himself, I can't watch this right now. I'll worry about that later on. Problem is, <laughs> later on is tonight, tonight now, guys. You're right. That was funny. It, it was a fun talk with the defensive coordinator of NC State. And, and here's why. Here's what will make an offensive or a defensive coordinator rather sick to their stomach when this can happen. You, you've done so well in bottling them up all night long. And, you know, and I thought it was interesting, guys. Malik Willis used that time during the timeout to throw the football. You can tell that he feels like he's a little bit off coming into this one. Like Willis again hanging on to that one with 228 and rolling in our first quarter. Isaiah Moore in on the tackle. Just a yard on the take by Willis for his head coach Hugh Freeze. Second season, 16 and 5. Tenth overall as a head coach. He's compiled 58 victories. 
He and Dave Doran should have met in the 2011 GoDaddy.com Bowl, but Freeze took the old Miss job, and Northern Illinois beat Arkansas State 38-20 in that one. The old GoDaddy.com Bowl, James. There's the pass by Willis, and it is complete. C.J. Yarborough on the catch, and the chains are greased and rolling for Liberty. 13 yards on the play, Dunlap on the tackle. First down, sticks will move, and here goes that tempo one more time. Nice catch by Yarbrough, good strong hands. They go right back at him, and flags will come from all directions. Malik Dunlap was defending for NC State, but as you can plainly see, at least three penalty markers on the field. Pass interference. Defense number 24. The penalty is an automatic first down. Spot of the foul. It's that quick slant one more time. And actually, when Peyton Wilson might have gotten a hand on it. Dunlap is flagged. And if that ball was tipped, it shouldn't have been a penalty. I couldn't tell, but didn't it look like Wilson might have gotten his hands on it? Potentially. We have the benefit of replay, certainly, James, but yes. So now to the doorstep of the red zone for Liberty Flames from the 20 of NC State. Trying the right side with very little available. Liberty 77% in the red zone this season. See if it, so you're talking about Peyton Wilson, number 11, right there, James. I don't know. No, I don't, looks, the spiral yeah. looked good. Yeah, I don't think it it was altered at all. So a good no call. Peyton Wilson's going to come back and <laughs> he's going to talk a little trash after that. Make a tackle on the next play. It's kind of what you've come to expect. Well, he's fun to watch. Good to have him healthy out there running around sideline to sideline, leading the ACC in tackles. Yeah, almost 11 per game for Wilson to lead the league. Unfortunately, a rash of yellow flags most recently. Although this offense, James, jump-started by the run by Malik Willis of 22 yards. Start. Offense, number 65. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Penalty goes against the Flames, and Kelly has more on Peyton Wilson defensively for NC State. Kelly? Yeah, guys, it doesn't matter who you talk to on this NC State team. When you ask about Wilson, they say the same thing. He has only got one speed, and that is 100% all the time. And Gibson, the defensive coordinator, as we mentioned, he said that when he first took over, you know, I love watching you, but we got to get you to calm down a little <laughs> bit. And there are some signs of him doing that, guys. But he said his practice has gotten so good, and he knows the schemes better than anybody out there right now thanks Kelly reminds me of a certain analyst that I work with very frequently only one speed and always having fun James oh, Bates hold on now <laughs> hold on you sure? I wish I wish I was a playmaker like that guy Joshua Mack on the run James we're getting down to the end of this first quarter and all of a sudden Liberty's come alive with this drive James Bates yeah there's Tony Gibson he said these are our guys out here in practice these are our guys we can't hurt our own guys Peyton Wilson and Isaiah Moore, who was on that last stop, the spark plugs over there defensively. And it's been mostly defense here in the first uh, first quarter, rather. Goose eggs as we end the first quarter. So Liberty drives it into the red zone. NC State did have a chance on a field goal, but missed. And for that first quarter, no scoring. Number 21 is in Raleigh. Liberty, NC State, scoreless after one. Liberty has scored 30 or more points in seven of their eight games, but held off the scoreboard so far. But they're into the CPI security red zone as we start the second quarter. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Kelly Cole on the sidelines, our outstanding ACC college football production crew with you from Raleigh, North Carolina. Time to get the clock rolling on the second 15. Flames will try to run it with Mack. Trying to get down near that 10-yard line. That's the first down marker. Very close to it. Seven yards on the run for Mack. Well, Mack showing some strength. It's Isaiah Moore knifing through there. And he couldn't get down to the legs. Couldn't wrap him up. So he keeps on churning. It's a fourth down and short. This is a Liberty team that went 0 for 2 on fourth down last week against Western Carolina in the win. But prior to that, Hugh Freeze and company had converted on eight straight fourth downs. Against Virginia Tech, they were four of four in the win in Blacksburg. They need a yard. 
14 of 18 on the season on fourth down. They'll try to trick up NC State, and it's not going to work. The pack was ready. They run down Willis. Turnover on downs. Great job by this defense and a great call by Tony Gibson. Everybody in the house probably thinking this is going to be right up the middle trying to power it behind that big offensive line for a yard. Everybody thinking that, but everybody on the defense in a red jersey ready for it. Tyler Baker, Baker Williams has been forced to grow up in a hurry. And the defensive back from right here in Raleigh who led the team in tackles with 14 against Miami gets a great big play a fourth down stop as the Liberty Flames were marching and knocking on the door in the red zone good job 13 so first and 10 from the 11 for NC State first in the back room to run past the 20 runs into the the defender, Haskins. First down yardage after the 12-yard run for Ricky Person Jr. We run it again. Same guy. And same result. First down past the 35-yard line. 13 yards, James. Yeah, the big dogs up front. Watch them open things up here. Here's Person again. Look at him. Bodies on the ground. <laughs> Look at that. That's a big old gap for eight to run through. And an attitude run as he finishes strong. Power in one more time here. Five yards on the rush. Ricky Person. Guys there in the middle, Elijah James, Ralph Russens, Treshawn Clark. You, you've got to hold your water. you got to hold your ground right there. You can't get washed out of there. Help those linebackers out. Anthony Butler behind them is a pretty good linebacker in his own right, but not if he's got guys up in his lap immediately after the snap. Hawkman tried to dump it off. That's incomplete looking for Knight. Boy, that play, that, that play could have been a big hitter, too. Butler was there. I'm not sure he had the right angle. And Knight puts it on the ground. In a screen game, it's, it's something this Liberty defense against Virginia Tech had a little bit of trouble with. We talked about it with Tim Beck on the Zoom call earlier this week, and he said, yeah, we've got definitely got some screens in our package, and we'll see them. There was a chance at a first down. Instead, it's third down and five. The Flames showing blitz here pre-snap. There's Butler that was a little antsy. One for three on third down. Hockman spins away, preserves the play. Finally gets rid of it. That's Knight who catches it right at the 35. It'll be well short of the marker. They needed to get up to the 46-yard line, and he was tackled by Haskins. So that play really never developed. That was a loss on the play of six yards for NC State. Trenton Gill's going to have to come out and punt, James. Well, it, it could have been a lot worse, the end result of that play. They were lucky that ball was complete into the hands of a Wolfpack player. Just throwing it up there and trying to get it back to the line of scrimmage, which they don't quite do. So a nice job there by Liberty. Mario Douglas is the return man. Gill just got it away. Douglas does have a 73-yard punt return for a touchdown against Louisiana Monroe. Tries to reverse field, and he gets dragged down near the 20. His punt return TD, the first in five years for Liberty. It's not going to happen on this play after the punt by Gill. 43 yards on the punt. Seth Williams getting down there. The third phase. Look at him. A Peyton Wilson Jr. perhaps. <laughs> ACC football is brought to you by CPI Secure. The Wolfpack statue just under the seating gear at Carter Finley Stadium. Again, about 4,000 fans allowed in for tonight's primetime game. Early in our second quarter, they're taking a look at the tail end of the return. Watch 91 come into your picture, Shimko. Yeah, that's the long snapper, Shimko. He's 
Gosh, a fun guy. Spent some time talking to him last year. We did a little feature on him. And, mm. and, and of course, they it wasn't called on the field, but unfortunately, by them taking a look at it, if, if they saw that, that clip right there, which you know they did, they get every angle just like we do. 91, Shimko, the starting long snapper, the sophomore, is probably done for this game. And that's going to hurt. Camden Woods is his backup. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. All right. Well, Shimko remains in. So <laughs> big smile for the sophomore from New Jersey. So you see those two highlighted games. Those are wins for Liberty against ACC opponents, and they have especially in those games, control the differential of time of possession, James, in the eight victories this year. Well, and Hugh Freeze admitted, he said, I knew we were not going to be able to stop Virginia Tech. And they really didn't for the most part, but he just wanted to control the ball on offense and score when they had it. He wants every possession to end in a kick of some sort. Don't turn it over, which they did a couple times in that game. Willis trying to create. And he gets taken down and sacked. Daniel Joseph there, Isaiah Moore also. It's a loss on the play for Willis of nine yards after the sack. Well, running for his life immediately. Great job by Daniel Joseph. Can't make plays on the ground. He misses, goes down to his knee, pops right back up, and there's Isaiah Moore to help him clean it up. 6 2, 242, Junior Moore. From Chester, Virginia. So Daniel Joseph credited with the sack. Willis just two of eight so far in the game throwing. And only 17 yards. Wants to try it again. And he is toppled. Daniel Joseph. Watch out for 99. Loss of five on the play. Second consecutive sack for the pack. Right side of your screen, splits a double team, goes right through two blockers from Liberty. And he's jazzed. Look at that, third and 24. You're going the wrong way, Liberty. They'll rush it with Pickett. Well short of the first down marker at the 32, and it's fourth down for Liberty. Driven back by the sacks by Daniel Joseph. Nine yards on the run by Pickett, but well short. And now the punting unit for Liberty. Well, I'm talking about those keys to beginning. Express yourself. Just, just nastiness. The nastiness of Daniel Joseph, Peyton Wilson getting after it there on that series. Now the offense is going to get the ball in their hands, and you'd like to see some nastiness from that offensive line and that running game and a chance to really get physical and march it back down the other way. Joseph now with six sacks on the season. Thomas watches this one bobble out of bounds near that 40-yard line for NC State. And they're going to mark it right at the 41. 42-yard punt. NC State has the ball when we come back in reasonably good field position. No score in the second quarter. NC State will have the ball at its own 41-yard line as we go down to the sidelines. More on that offensive line for the pack and Kelly Crow. Yeah, guys, we hear a lot about Icky, who started out at left guard, and then Tyrone Riley got hurt, so we moved him over to left tackle, and he said, you know, Bryson's beast, number 56 for us, he's really the Swiss Army knife of this group. He has literally played every position on the offensive line, and Coach Garrison said, you know what? I'm a big hockey fan. I like line changes. I'll go with seven, eight offensive linemen, and I may tell him to switch positions during the game, but that is something he feels like is so important, whether it's injuries, to have that versatility and that depth. He has really prided this unit on that this season. And boy, they look good out there tonight, guys. Absolutely, Kelly, and not just to to keep them fresh, but to give them experience because the, the, it's a long football season and the injuries and in 2020, you know, a contact tracing could take a couple guys out. So, so important to get that experience. But Big Icky's been a lot of fun to watch. See if he and the offensive front can get after it here on this series with 9.38 left in the half. Uh-oh. 
Person gave it back to Hockman. He'll tuck and run and get out of bounds short of midfield. Forced out by Haskins. Six yards on the run for Bailey Hockman, the junior from Powder Springs, Georgia. A nice job defensively. And the reason that play only went for about six yards is because nobody was falling asleep back in that secondary. Staying at home and staying on those guys. Hawkman looking up top. Nothing doing, so he tucks it and gets six. Three TD passes a week ago and a career high for Hawkman against Florida State. At least two flags are out. And there's three. Ball start. Offensive line. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. You know, second and short after that. Now you're looking at a second down and, and long. The, there's Icky kind of telling himself it looks like to calm down, but it, it it looked like almost that rather than a false start, it was Grant Gibson who wasn't on the same page and didn't snap the ball. The whole offensive line got off the spot. Person. Elijah James on the stop after five yards for Person. See, you know, the five-yard penalty, no penalty, and, and the chains are moving. They're across the 50-yard line. Instead, here's an important third down. Four yards to go. One for four on third down in the game. Hockman, quick release, complete. Liberty side of the 50 and a first down at the 45-yard line to Devin Carter. Well, what a great target to have. 6'4", 216 pounds, the big body. Even if the defender was right on him, Meganson, that's still going to be very tough to cover. And giving him plenty of cushion, they're just trying to keep everybody in front. Carter got eight yards. Now the run from Person Jr. gets by one man and then rumbles down near the 25-yard line and inside of it took that first hit head on. Elijah James finally takes him down. Uh, again, Liberty, you're in position. Go make the play, wrap up and make a tackle, and then watch Emeka Amezi. The reason you get big plays happening on offense is because of looks like that. Emeka Amezi, the senior, knows what to do. That ball away from him. It looks like Person's in a lot of pain over there as he's on the sidelines. Yeah, after the 21-yard run from Person, little dump off, short little pass complete to Angeline. That's another catch for him as he gets inside the 20-yard line. Carl Poole was number 57. James also there. 55 and a senior from Chicago, Illinois. Well, James tapping his helmet. He wants a breather, but <laughs> NC State's not going to give it to him. Quickly over that ball. On second and five. Knight to the five and to the end zone. Zonovan, bam, Knight. 19 yards to the house. Chugging a toughy beer. Why not? Man, got some offense finally. Big Bam Knight. Liberty Flame players looking over there, looking for a little bit of a break. Hey, I got something for you, says Bam Knight, running through a couple good blocking up front as well and charging into the end zone. Sixth rushing TD of the season for Knight, and that leads the team. And now Liberty facing its biggest deficit in the last nine games. Seven points. Thanks to number seven for the NC State Wolfpack to finish off the drive. 7-0 NC State in the second. So thanks to Zonovan Bam Knight taking it into the end zone. The Wolfpack have a 7-0 lead after the 19-yard touchdown run by Knight, who's got four carries, 29 yards, and the TD. And a lot of good work in that drive by Ricky Person. He's got eight carries, 76 yards. And Knight finished it off with his sixth TD rush of the season. No return on that kickoff.
Here's our Yellowwood five-star drive summary, and it's night into the end zone. Six plays. They took two minutes and 42 seconds off the clock here at Carter Finley, James Bates. Well, Bam averaging about six and a half yards a carry that time from 19 yards out. He's so hard to bring down. He, he can do it all. He, he really is fun to watch. And I mean, and not just from the running back position, as we saw a couple weeks ago, his 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against the Canes. 103 yards a game, the average all-purpose yards for Bam Knight. Pick it. Fenced in and dropped at the 20. Uh, look at him rally to the football, Tom. Leading the charge is Peyton Wilson. Why not the leading tackler in the ACC? But that's pretty to watch a defense that just rallies, swarming the football. Look at all these red hats. Nowhere to go. You talk about lockdown and advice. And what happens? What happens if there's a fumble? Who's going to get that fumble? I'll guarantee it's going to be an NC State guy. You got to be around the ball to make plays. Excellent job by Tony Gibson's defense right there to swarm that ball. Liberty averaging just 2.9 yards per rush. Keep in mind, they average 254 yards on the ground per game. That is 12th in the football bowl subdivision. Struggling tonight on the ground. Willis intercepted at midfield. Intercepted Harris on the return. Harris to the 25, and then he steps out of bounds just inside it. So there are flags on the field after the interception from Jakeem Harris. Two flags back near midfield. Well, Harris, one of those young guys that's been asked to step in and contribute and contributing in a big way here. He had the big force fumble against Virginia in a close one a couple weeks ago. Here, this ball just too high and hard, but not too hard for Harris. Right into his breadbasket, and he knew just what to do with it. They'll talk over this flag. Part of the interception, personal foul, targeting number 10 of the defense. That play is under further review. And that's Tanner Engel. All right, so he said prior to the interception. So that will overturn this interception. They're calling it prior. Now, I wonder if they can change that. They can look at a lot of things. It's... But, but Tanner Engel, he, he's, he's done. Tanner Engel's been out for targeting. He's been out for injuries. They finally get him back. They're going to lose him for the rest of this game, though, either way. So the officials trying to sort out this targeting review. Here's Jeff Flanagan. After further review, there was targeting on the play by number 10 of the defense. Number 10 is disqualified. The targeting happened, happened after the interception. The penalty will be enforced 15 yards from the 45-yard line. The defense will keep the ball first down. All right, you got that. So NC State keeps the ball because the targeting is after the interception and Tanner Engel, you'd think that he would have that new rule down by now that he can stay on the field because this is his second time this year. He's obviously upset and one of Dave Dorn's favorite players over there hugging him up. He's he's so upset with himself. He was ejected for targeting against Virginia. Had six tackles before that one and fought back from an injury just to get here tonight. They were so excited about having him back out there, having a little bit of experience at that safety spot. But we will not see him anymore tonight. Now, fortunately for NC State, it'll just be this football game, and it won't carry over. And they go to Syracuse next week. So he'll be available for that game. New rule this year, he can remain on the field. But he's done for the night at that safety spot. The targeting against DJ Stubbs, that was the receiver for Liberty, but as James mentioned, because it happened after the interception by Jakeem Harris, NC State gets possession. Knight. That is just across midfield into Liberty territory. Haskins made the tackle. We've called his number and name several times tonight. 12 yards on the run by 
Bam Knight. He's got that TD run of 19 yards in this quarter. That represents our only scoring this evening. A missed field goal attempt of the first quarter from Christopher Dunn from 37 yards away, also for NC State. First and ten for Hockman in the pack. They'll go with Knight. Well, Tim Beck on the Zoom call this week, guys, he told us that, that they've got the same. One thing he harps on is fight bo boredom. Bailey Hawkman was talking about it. Fight boredom. Well, Kelly, you think he can fight boredom here? Because right now, the way it looks, they cannot stop. Bam, might. It's it's not quite as sexy. It's not fun, but it's 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 boring football, but it's still working. They're going to run it again. Some quick moves from Knight. First down, down to the 30, Kelly Crow for Bam Knight. Yeah, and Bailey Hackman referenced the sign, the fight boredom sign that is in their quarterback's room. He goes, I got to keep taking check downs, keep taking the hitches. If it's a 13 play drive that scores, that's what it's going to be. But guys, we'll hear Coach Beck and I have on the sidelines yelling, fight boredom, fight boredom. <laughs> There's Knight fighting for more yardage, trying to get to the red zone right at the 20. For Bam Knight, steady diet of number seven in red and white as Pierre and Stone James combine the stop. Well, and, and it's so demoralizing just defensively, on that defensive line, to just get punched in the nose time after time after time and not be able to do anything. When a football team is able to run on you, Boy, it's really tough for a defense, but you know, it's it's not always the most fun and flashy for the fans So it it could be considered boring ball, but it's working. Uh-oh on the turf Hockman falls on it prior to that play NC State had rolled up 168 yards of total rushing offense But that'll be a negative play of 13 yards Boy, that one Nothing wrong with that snap Bailey Hawkman had to go and wrestle it down. So first time in a while they've gone back the other way. A loss of 13. NC State with the 7-0 lead. Fifth game against a ranked opponent this season. But the first game against a ranked non-conference opponent since 2008. When they had a win against East Carolina and a loss against South Florida. This pass is complete to Porter Rooks, number 14, getting into the act. Scruggs on the stop, number one in white. So Rooks got three on the catch. Balls at the 30 of Liberty. Now we're inside of three minutes to go in our second quarter. So this is third and 20. Digging deep in the playbook for third and 20 for Hockman and NC State. Well, you've got a kicker that can boot it from... 53. The lefty Hockman. Time to deliver. Over the middle, and it's intercepted at the two. Picked off, and the return from Cedric Stone. And flags come out at the tail end of that play as Stone came up with the interception inside the five. Well, the frustration, obviously, but you can't throw a guy down when he's he's definitely out of bounds. It's just costly with the targeting penalty. Otherwise, you're sitting pretty when you get this football. And now here at the end of this one, excellent job to track that one down by Chris Stone. And there you see the end of it. Devin Carter. He's already out of bounds and he throws him down. So you're going to attack 15 yards here onto this one and, and just allowing Liberty to hang around. You know, it's it's the consistency in, in the momentum. It, it's such a big thing in college football. And doesn't Dave Doran know it? You're, you're just chewing them up on the ground. They cannot stop you running the football, period. They haven't really stopped them yet. And then you, you fumble a snap, you, you let your guard down, fumble a snap, and lose 13 yards. Then you got to go to the air and launch one up there. And then you help out an offense that is yet to wake up here today and give them a freebie right before half of 15 yards after the fact with plenty of time on the clock. 
NC State had driven it down in the red zone against Liberty, but the turnover is the first interception of the season for Stone. There, there are multiple dead ball personal fouls on the play by both teams. Personal foul, number 88, offense. Personal foul, number, correction, a sportsmanlike foul, number 19 of the, of the offense. First unsportsmanlike foul on number 19. Unsportsmanlike foul, number four on, the, on Liberty. His un, first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. All fouls will offset. Oh, first down. So if I heard Jeff Flanagan correctly, and I think that I do, Two fouls were against Carter and Riley of NC State, one against Meganson, and they all, at the end, James, he said they all offset. Right. Sound okay to you? Well, I, I, I'm not great at math. I, I know they don't quite even out. Okay. But, but I know that one guy's got to be happy. That's Devin Carter, that they're not marching him down 15 yards from there. But still, plenty of time and three timeouts for Liberty. Now, remember, Willis is struggling in this game so far James just two of nine and 17 yards his interception that he threw picked off by Harris was the first in five games for Malik Willis and so now we're trying to figure out the exact spot there's a challenge on the spot right now that chain is at the 27 yard line of Liberty that's stone on the return Oh. Devin Carter has him up around the collar. Well, that's going to go back, what, about 10 yards? Well, assuming what Jeff Flanagan said was correct, that all of those personal fouls and unsportsmanlike penalty as well on C.J. Riley all offset, he's, I mean, he's well short of the 20-yard line, right, James? Right, right. 16-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from the 16. So they will move it back to the 16, according to Mr. Flanagan. That was a lot to decipher and dissect. And <laughs> it was. He needed some help on that one. I don't blame him one bit. So, James, 2.32 to go in the second quarter. Just 7 nothing, NC State. So, Liberty, maybe the numbers don't favor the Flames, but they're hanging in there. Right. Well, they've got to hang on to that football right now. Hey, if if you don't put points on the board, you go into halftime down seven to nothing. Nothing wrong with that, but don't turn it over and give the short field and the ball back to NC State. Willis completing that pass at the 25-yard line. That was Johnny Huntley, number zero. Nine yards on that connection. That'll bring up second and short for Liberty. They're going to run it with Mack. He's got enough for the first down and plenty more. Out past the 35 to the 37 for Joshua Mack, the senior running back. Right back over that ball. NC State practices against this type of offense. The back can set, but they're in turbo mode now. No longer turtle mode. So Willis put some air under that one. It is incomplete. It looked like Jakeem Harris came over and attempted yet another interception. C.J. Yarbrough is the receiver who is down and slow to get up for Liberty. That's Yarbrough up against double coverage as Jakeem Harris joined the play. Yeah, Yarbrough who had a nice catch earlier. Or a little move and had to have been a perfectly thrown ball. And, and you know what? It's a great break on the football. But I don't think it'll be a targeting by Jakeen Harris, who almost had his second interception of the day. Excellent break, and he's going for that football. And as he attempts to catch that football, he runs into the head of C.J. Yarbrough. Hopefully he's okay. Yarbrough already missed some time earlier this season. And over on the other sideline, he's up and running along the bench. So that's good to see. So a second down and 10 after the incomplete pass and a good no foul, no flag right there on Jakeen. Cecil Powell is all also back there, number four for NC State in coverage. 
four receiver set. Malik Willis, Jr. from Atlanta, Georgia. Mack, just beyond the 40. And now 145 to go in our second quarter. Liberty, number 21 in the country, undefeated. 3-0 away from Lynchburg, Virginia. About 150 miles from our location here in Raleigh. They're down in six. If they don't get this one, here's a free play. Flags are out. Into double coverage and incomplete. Trying to thread that pass to Noah Frith. Offside. Defense number 52. Five-yard penalty. Third down. 52 is C.J. Clark, redshirt freshman, New London, North Carolina. Well, they got some big guys in the middle there from North Carolina. Lee McNeil, C.J. Clark. So third down and one after he helps them along with the five-yard penalty. Two of six on third down in the first half for Liberty. This is third and one. Willis throws it too high for the receiver. The flag comes out. There are two of them. C.J. Daniels was the receiver against his number sake, number four, Cecil Powell for NC State. Pass in the third. Defense number four. The penalty's an automatic first down. The spot of the foul. Seventh penalty against NC State this first half, James. Well, just a slant. Had a hand on him and wouldn't give him a chance to go up and get it. Powell, who had a nice break earlier on that ball, almost had an interception in the form of wide receiver. There goes Willis. Willis, first down and more, trying to get to the 30, won't quite get there. Stopped by Powell. 12 yards on the run for Willis. Some post whistle discussions as well between the teams. <laughs> Liberty still with three timeouts. Remember, Barbier is a guy who can boot it, big strong kicker. And they, they want more than three. They'd like to punch it in and get seven and tie it up right here. Remember, Liberty will get the football to open the second half. Willis open spaces. And the hole closes quickly at the 25 for Willis. Got six yards on the run. And a timeout taken by Liberty, James. You mentioned their kicker, Barbier, who's coming off a 54-yarder against Western Carolina, a career long for Barbier, who, as we showed you at the top of the broadcast, made a 51-yarder to beat Virginia Tech in that dramatic finish in Blacksburg. Yeah, if you were watching any football on that weekend, November 7th, and that Virginia Tech, you saw the, oh, the excitement of what looked to be a block against Barbier by Virginia Tech and a return for a touchdown. Instead, Fuente had called a timeout and a 51-yarder to win it. Before we proceed, a message from Bojangles. The whole family with a big bow box. It's bow time. Perfect timing for the second and four play. 51 seconds to go in our second quarter. Willis now with seven carries for 31 yards. Max, the leading rusher, with seven carries and 41 yards. Willis to throw it. This to the end zone and knocked away. Several players in the vicinity. Mario Douglas was the receiver for Liberty. And back there was Baker Williams, number 13, for the pack. Well, excellent coverage underneath. And a good recovery. He grabbed on a little bit to make up some ground, but Baker Williams, if you don't get caught, it didn't happen, right? He comes back underneath, gets back into position, that inside hip, forcing that throw to go high. And a dangerous throw falls to the ground to bring up this third down and three. All right, two for six for Liberty, third and three before we get it. Timeout on the field, and it's taken by NC State. So that ball is spotted right at the 26-yard line. 
And 45 seconds left on the clock for Hugh Freeze and Dave Doran. So we told you about those incredible numbers compiled by Malik Willis, but NC State, for the most part, James, they've been able to limit his play tonight. Yeah, they certainly have. They got nasty, and when they've blitzed, they haven't missed. They've gotten after them, especially guys like Daniel Joseph, and then Peyton Wilson has done a really good job along with Isaiah Moore against the run. The secondary has been impressive as well, and, and I think the athleticism and, and some of the maturity and lack thereof with a couple penalties, but but in some of these these coverage situations, they've grown up a little bit. This young secondary and it unable to really run away a lot of these players for liberty. Not quite as as Hugh Freeze has put it a couple of times. You know the roster isn't quite the same. They're at liberty right now in the second year of FBS football play as it is here in Raleigh with NC State, and it's shown a couple of times I think when they try to throw the ball and throw it deep. Just 26 yards total passing for Willis in the game. As you saw, he's 3 of 12. Wants to put it in the air again. Willis has the time. Pump and run. Malik Willis, 15-yard line. Into the 14 for Willis. Isaiah Moore on the tackle. Peyton Wilson also there, number 11. Yeah, asked Willis this week. If he liked contact, he said, no, I just forget to slide sometimes. I was just trying to get some yards. That's a short run from Shedra Lewis. Timeout. Liberty. So Liberty takes an immediate timeout. It's second. And there's 24 seconds on the game clock. Keep in mind, Liberty has scored 43 touchdowns this season. That's tied for fifth nationally, but they've been kept out of the end zone so far by NC State with 24 seconds to go in our second quarter. Tenth play of the drive coming up for the Flames. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The injury to Yarbrough, if they can't get him back out there, really hurts this offense. And the big target of Johnny Huntley, the tight end, becomes so important. But you can see a situation like that. They don't feel 100% comfortable throwing this football all around the yard. And it looks like 13 Yarbrough may be back in the game up top, top of your screen. So he's a bigger target at 6'3", 205 if they look up top. Second down from the NC State 12 for Liberty. Pressure goes by Willis, throws to the end zone, and a touchdown! Willis rifled it on the run, and he hit Noah Fritz for the score for Liberty. 12 yards on the touchdown pass from Willis to Frith. How about 16 TD passes on the season, James, for Malik Willis? Well, and how about shaking off the accuracy problems early in this game on the fly to just fire it in there? An excellent throw on the hop and showing you right there Malik Willis he'll use those feet and he could have come close to that goal line on the ground instead he drills one in there to Frith what a beautiful throw and a nice play for Hugh Freeze in this offense to tie it up at seven with 19 ticks left here in the first half second TD catch of the season for Noah Frith and it was Willis with the vision to the back of the end zone he zipped that one right on the money James to 81 and white and, and it wasn't bad coverage at all by battle. Right there on him, had hand stretched out and almost got a piece of it. You've got Isaiah Moore and Peyton Wilson right there providing the pressure. And here's a guy, Malik Willis, that's been popped quite a few times already tonight. Cool and calm, takes a couple steps up in that pocket rather than tucking it and running it to the goal line like you would have expected from a De'Ara King a couple weeks ago with Miami. He sets up his feet and fires it in there to Frith, the sophomore from Woodstock, Georgia. Ten play drive for Liberty. Willis, who threw four TD passes of 83, 56, 44, and 40 yards in the win against Western Carolina last week to roll up 58 points in the victory. Highest accumulation of points this season 
for Liberty. Knight on the return, short of the 30 and 15 seconds on the game clock. How about Liberty coming back with the TD? They had struggled through the air, but that's how they get it in the end zone. Remember on the previous possession, James, he'd thrown an interception. His first of five games. Now Willis throws it in the end zone, and we're tied at seven. It says a lot about Hugh Freeze's quarterback, Malik Willis, and, and, and he'll tell you, he's not only is he extremely talented, but he's, he's very humble and he's just he's just dying to learn every time out there, just wants to learn. And he, he's so easy to coach, Freeze will tell you, and the offensive coordinator, Ken Austin as well. He's cool and calm and trying to run this one out as NC State. But NC State, Tom, for the most part, they, they've really come into this first half and they've beaten up on Liberty, but it certainly doesn't show on this scoreboard. 7-7, seven to seven, Liberty will get the ball to start the second half. This is anybody's football game, but it really shouldn't be. But that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes in the turnovers in the penalties. Uh, Quite a bit in the mix in the first half. Both teams need to clean it up in the second half if they want to walk away with a win. 156 yards rushing in the first half for NC State and the 19-yard TD run of the second quarter by Zonovan Bam Knight. The sophomore got it in the end zone for Dave Doran. And a late response in the last seconds of the second quarter with the TD pass, Malik Willis. 16 TD passes on the season. Down to Kelly and Dave Dorn. Coach, your team held Willis and company scoreless there till the very end. How do you assess that first half? I think our guys on defense are playing really well. I mean, they're giving us a chance to win, forced to turn over, we're stopping to run. He's gotten out on a couple scrambles, which he does. You know, we got to get rid of some of the penalties that are hurting us, you know. Offensively, we need to get some points. I mean, that's one thing we've been able to do is score. So we got to get back going that way. I knew you'd bring up the penalties. I know that drives you crazy. How do you clean that up, and how do you get your offense in the end zone next time? Well, it's, it's immaturity. You know, our guys have to clean it up. They know what to do, and they need to do it right. Coach, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. And, and we apologize for the technical difficulties, but James, you heard at the very end, he said maturity. We need to clean it up in the second half, and we'll see if they can do that against the number 21 team in the nation, which is hanging tough with NC State. Knight had the TD run of 19 yards in the first half, but Hugh Freeze and his team responding. An interception by Stone, and Liberty got it in the end zone right before the end of the half. Seven all, halftime straight ahead from Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome back to the Toyota Halftime Report and NC State and Liberty tied at seven here at the half and in his eighth season here at Raleigh, NC State head coach Dave Doran has really taken the program and fit it to his personality. Hard nosed, tough, and the team works together. And certainly this season will be one unlike any other, but the drive of Doran in this team has never been stronger. This is Driven. Dave Doran, presented by your local Toyota dealers. I went to grad school and coached high school ball for a year, seeing if that was where I fit, and just was having so much fun. I'm like, if I could get paid to do this, it was like just so much fun. From that point on, I was just kind of driven to keep going. This is home to us now, and, and it's been a really good fit and a blessing, you know, for me and our family. This is going to be a year that we never forget. There's no doubt about it. And we have a chance to write our own story in it. And I think there's been tremendous opportunities uh, to give in uh, or to fight back and, and to make a difference. And I feel like our guys are making a difference. We have a chance to, to really write a great ending to that story now. And that's really it. You know, we all get dealt what we get dealt. It's how you, you know, respond and, and take advantage of the moment. And right now, we, we've built a team of guys that really care about each other, a staff that really cares about each other, and they go out and play really hard, you know. And with all the injuries and all the other things, it's a fun football team to coach. It's fun, man. I mean, that's, you can't get that anywhere else. Dave Doran is presented by your local Toyota dealers. The new 2020 Toyota 4Runner. Visit toyota.com for more information. 
ACC Football is brought to you by the Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Available at MyLandroid.com. Your local Sherwin Williams paint store. Painting questions? Ask Sherwin Williams. And Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Carter Finley Stadium, the site of our game this evening. Halftime, and it's seven all. The Liberty Flames. The NC State Wolfpack and how about Liberty James because as we had noted during the course of the first half statistically being dominated by NC State and specifically on the ground by the Wolfpack but Liberty gets that late touchdown Malik Willis fires it into the end zone and we're tied at seven. You freeze he'll tell his team week after week just get me to the fourth quarter especially when you're playing these ACC type teams which by the way if you're just joining us are they, <laughs> these flames are 2-0 and oh against ACC teams wins over Syracuse over Virginia Tech a couple weeks ago trying to make it three in a row he says just get me to the fourth quarter well they've certainly done their job in the first half they've used a lot of help though it's been sloppiness over on the NC State side you mentioned the running I mean they still Liberty still has not stopped NC State running the football NC State just costing themselves in, in penalties like Tanner Ingles targeting penalty this is a young secondary yeah. but not that guy he's the most experienced player in this secondary he can't cost his team like that he's just and he wants to be out there but you got to be smarter yeah, Knight and person have been strong in the run game for NC State but in the numbers that matter James seven all after the first half and you heard coach Dorn on the way in saying we got to clean this up a little bit because Liberty is hanging tough Liberty's the number 21 team in the nation if you're just joining us like James said there's a reason the Flames are undefeated. Yes, they're stepping up in competition, but they've already beaten two ACC teams this season. Another thing, too, they they have the second longest winning streak in the nation behind Notre Dame. They've won right. 10 games in a year going back to last year. There's something to be said about that, a team that expects to win football games. No matter how much they were thrown around in that first half, they're going to come out in the second half expecting to win this football game, and it's NC State's job to shut them down. Yeah, Notre Dame has won 14 in a row, Liberty 10 in a row, and trying to increase that streak tonight against NC State. We'll see if the pack has something to say about that in the second half. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. That first one was from Last night in Louisville, the shutout win for the Cards. And then Pitt with the win against the Virginia Tech team, James, that we just talked about that was defeated by this Liberty team on a late field goal. Yeah, Pitt at times looks like one of the top three teams in the ACC. And when they get Kenny Pickett full healthy, uh, it's, he, it's a good football team. Defensively, they're outstanding. And I'm just glad they didn't have to play with masks on in that game. That was the word yesterday, but that wasn't the case in Virginia with a big win, 55-15 over Abilene Christian. Here's some of the up Updates of note. You see Louisville and Boston College now to be played on the 28th. Wake in Louisville. That's moving to December 19th. And I mentioned that Duke and Wake Forest, that one has been out and out canceled. And we're shooting for an ACC championship game in Charlotte on December 19th. There will be a test. Yes, we're, we're, hopefully we get there. We have our fingers crossed that everybody does the right things between now and then. Willis to the end zone. Put a little zip on that one, and they've got the TD to tie the game halfway through. Halftime in Raleigh, seven all. NC State and Liberty. Seven all before we start the third moments ago. The head coach of the Liberty Flames, Hugh Freeze, with Kelly on the sidelines. Coach, you told us earlier in the week this team could go turbo or turtle speed. We saw a little bit more of the turtle in the first half. What can we expect here coming out of the locker room? Well, as long as we, we keep this thing where we have a shot in the fourth quarter, that's the whole plan is to find a way to give our kids a chance to win in the fourth. And, um, you know, we were a little better when we went faster. Um, so that's tempting to me. Uh, we'll kind of see how this opening drive goes and, and, and see how we play it. But, you know, we've got uh, they're doing some good things on defense to us that hopefully we've made some adjustments that will help us. It's always a bit tempting for you, isn't it? But Malik Willis there, that touchdown right before the half. Do you feel like he and the offense have settled in a bit now? Well, I hope so. It sure, uh, you know, we weren't settled before that drive. And uh, hopefully they settle down some and, and, and we get him in some more things that he's comfortable with. Awesome. Coach, best of luck in the second half. We appreciate your time as yep. always. Thank you so much. Kelly, thank you. Willis was just 4 of 13 for 38 yards, but did throw the TD pass to Noah Frith late in that second quarter. 12 yards on the touchdown connection. And the Flames will get the ball to start the second half. Shedro Lewis, the deep man. 
from the goal line. 20-yard line, breaking a tackle. 30-yard line, Lewis, flag is out. Up near the 35 on the return. Again, penalty marker thrown on the return by Lewis. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 25, 10-yard penalty, first down. Peyton Pickett is number 25. Time for our game summary presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. There you see the 91 yards rushing for Liberty. Hugh Freeze knows, as you heard him talk to Kelly coming out, if he wants to slow it down, he has to be able to run the football. NC State, on the other hand, they have had a lot of success running the football. 156, the penalties, as we just see to open up this second half, there's one that costs Liberty. Both of these teams have got to clean things up. This is going to be a game that may come down to the fourth quarter, just as Hugh Freeze talked about. And you don't want penalties getting in the way of a chance at a win. Willis threw for just over 300 yards in the win last week against the Catamounts of Western Carolina, trying to run it and string it out, and he goes out of bounds. Willis was knocked out by Powell. Boy, excellent job by Baker Williams. Tyler Baker Williams, he's going to fight his tail off to get off that block and get outside. Keep it outside, keep it outside, keep it outside, and to stretch it. And then you've got all those guys rallying to the tackle so many times. And one thing that's really stood out to me tonight with Tony Gibson's defense is the way this, this team, the, the pack, they're hunting like a pack and they're swarming the football. And Tyler Baker Williams knows that he has to keep flat and get out there and widen it and make Malik Willis go all the way to the sideline and get some help. Willis steps back, now steps forward and slides down short of the 35. In fact, they're going to mark him back at the 31 or 2 as Peyton Wilson came up to meet him. Well, Peyton Wilson's got to be careful here. He, you know, it's, it, it doesn't seem like much, but it is a rule to protect the quarterback. When he gives himself up, He's done. You can't. When he when he goes in for that slide, which Malik Willis told us he, he seems to forget all the time, you've got to ease up. So he's lucky they didn't throw a flag on him right there. Live to play another down, but it's third down and three, and a big one to start this second half. Three of seven on third down in the game for Liberty. Forty-seven percent as a team on the season in third down conversions. Willis from the pocket, and that one up there in midfield is incomplete, and there are no flags. Yes, there, yes, there are. Right. Noah Frith was the intended receiver. He's got the touchdown catch. Powell was defending, and the flag came out at midfield. Pass interference. Defense number four. 15 yard penalty. First down. It's a good call. It, the flag, it may have come late, but Cecil Powell, he gets flat footed. And, and rather than staying in an athletic position and denying that inside cut, he just grabs because he's flat-footed and is going to get run by, so you live to play another down. But a costly one on third and three, you're going to have a chance to get off the field and force him to punt. Willis kept it. Going to be dropped for a loss near the 42-yard line in pursuit. Tyler Baker Williams. Loss of four on the play. Well, especially with Engel out. Ejected with the targeting. Now Tyler Baker Williams becomes one of the more experienced players in this secondary. And he's really stepping up and showing it here. Mentioned the 14 tackles he had. He led the team against Miami, which is always a good thing from that safety position. It's tackles on guys like De'Ara King. But this one, you'll take this one any time. Going back the other way, a drop for a loss of four yards. That Miami game was a wild one, over a thousand yards combined by the teams, and Hockman threw an interception late, and that sealed it for the Canes. That one is bobbled and dropped. Aggressive defending on DJ Stubbs. Again, it's Tyler Baker Williams. 13's been so active. Gonna come right at him. Everybody on that offensive line cutting up front. And again, here, here's another one that. If you're going to come in, you're going to you're going to beat three ACC teams this year. Win here in Raleigh, you've got to catch the ball. DJ Stubbs, the leading receiver on this football team, 
He's got to hold on to that football. It's third down and 14 now. Stubbs, who does not have a catch in the game, had 30 coming into the game for 399 yards, as Jay mentioned, to lead this team. That's near midfield. but still well short of the marker to Frith. So the ball's at about the 50 with a six-yard gain, but they needed to get to the 43 of NC State, and now it's fourth and eight. Good job by Battle. Hey, let him run those routes in front of you all day long. Well shy of the first down marker. He knows where those chains are. You're going to get off the field. This is an offense that loves to go for it on fourth down. You know, this is a, this is a fake alert situation, but not going to go for it here offensively with eight yards to go. We've got a dangerous return man back there waiting on it. Thayer Thomas, the former walk-on who earned his scholarship for the 2018 season, gets away from that one. Sideways bounce right near the goal line. <laughs> oh, it was going to stay touch, out touch on break. its own. Wow. How close was that? Wow, Tom. The, the ball, it, it really seemed like it was going to stay out of this end zone on its own had it not been touched. Good hustle. The right screen with the wrong yo-yo. Oh. NC State takes over, 11.36 to go in our third quarter. We're tied at seven. Tom, good to, see Ricky, sorry, Rick, good to see Ricky Person back out there. He was banged up. Looked to be in a little bit of pain in the first half. Some fresh legs on number eight. It's a good thing for NC State. Nine carries, 77 yards for Person in the first half. There is no gain as he was... Stopped at the line of scrimmage with forward progress as they start to drive from the 20 after that punt almost was downed inside the one from Aiden Alves. Second down for NC State. Hockman to his right. Up to the 22 goes Ricky Person. Just two yards, so third and long for NC State. Nice job in the open field by Butler. Anthony Butler leading this team in tackles with 51 coming into today. Taking down a tough guy to do in space in person for a short gain. So here's your third down and long defensively. Know where that, that chain is, where that marker is, the 30-yard line where they're going to break those routes off. Third straight home game for NC State after the win against Florida State right here last week. 38 to 22. Hockman grabbed and dragged down at the five and sacked. Nowhere to throw it for Hockman and he gets sacked. That's a loss of 13 on the play. And Washington came in there defensively. Well, and he's just going to come underneath again. He's got two blockers. He splits two blockers on that defensive end. And the undersized Washington, just a, a little bit more fight in that dog. And he drops Bailey Hawkman for a big loss, fourth down and 21. So quite a series to answer here for this Liberty defense after their offense can't get anything going. First sack of the game for Liberty as Gill punts from his own end zone to Demario Douglas backtracking 35-yard line. Slashing his way up past the 45 on the return for Douglas. 11 yards on the return for Douglas. Liberty has the ball, a flag on the they play. Can, uh, so it looks like it's gonna be offsides on Liberty, the return team. Remember, it was fourth and 21. It was a nice boot. Offside, defense number 18. The penalty will be, de be declined. First down. Yeah, a lot can go wrong with that, that snap and that punt when you get a nice one off like Gill just did right there, even though it was a little bit of a return. Leave well enough alone and go play some defense because you've done pretty good so far gotta continue Jay, to keep him in check that punt was 59 yards from Gill out of his own end zone for a little bit of breathing room but still very good field position from the 47 for Liberty nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter a 
Highest ranking in school history for Liberty. Third season playing at the football bowl subdivision level. This is their best starting field position of the season, and they get a nice chunk on first down into NC State real estate with Joshua Mack. NC State side of the 50. Yeah, Thomas Sargent, that center, the big man, the senior from Mechanicsville, Virginia, the former walk-on, just leading the charge there in the middle. Damian Bounds and Brendan Schittler right next to him. Ten-game winning streak, James, for Liberty. The school record is 11. That was in 2007 and 2008, but at the time they were a football championship subdivision team. So this the bowl subdivision record and trying to increase that streak. Looking for their 11th straight win going back to last season. 8-0 this year for Liberty. A good job at the point of attack by C.J. Clark and company right there. Given the back nowhere to go, Joshua Mack tries to cut it back and find some space, but he's got a couple other guys with red jerseys waiting on him. So he's a third and six now. Three of eight on third down. With this pass near the 20, hauled in. Right near the 20-yard line. 28 yards on the plate of Frith. There is a flag down, though. Offside, defense number 90. It'll be declined, first down. It was a back shoulder throw, a pretty throw, and would have been interesting had the defensive back kept his footing. The DB fell down, so it was an easy pitch and catch from Willis to Frith. Frith has been huge here for the quarterback in this game. The sophomore, a Georgia quarterback and a Georgia wide receiver hooking it up here in Raleigh. Three catches and 46 yards for Frith. There's another throw, wide open man, five yard line and out of bounds. Demario Douglas with a twisting grab and they'll mark him at the four. First and goal, Liberty. Good job by Douglas, but again, that's a situation where a guy's wide open. Give him a little touch and give him a chance to adjust and walk into the end zone. Where you're going to have to earn it. Second effort goes nowhere from Shedro Lewis. Boy, Liberty fans better hope they can punch it into the end zone because that could be costly. It was a sure touchdown. Willis threw it a little bit too hard and off the mark and forced Douglas to take the momentum, take him out of bounds. So Wilson with the drop on first down, a second down and goal from this six-yard line. James Liberty in the CPI security red zone. They do have a TD pass late in the second quarter from 12 yards away. This is also into the back corner of the end zone and caught. Touchdown, Liberty. Jerome Jackson, number 88. Six yards on the pass from Malik Willis, his second TD toss. Tom, these tight ends have been playing really well for Liberty. Johnny Huntley has been getting a lot of the attention. Jerome Jackson's been doing a great job this year as well. The junior from Fort Worth. Wow, what a nice play call by Ken Austin and Hugh Freeze. So the Flames scored late in the second. They're on the board in the third. Willis goes to the end zone to Jerome Jackson. He's wide open. The Flames have taken a 14-7 lead on the road against Dave Torrance and the back. Fourteen seven, Hugh Freeze and the Flames. Willis gets it to the end zone again. Second TD pass by Willis. Two for three in the red zone with two scores for touchdowns, James. Well, Tom, here's what a Malik, Malik Willis can do to you. Yeah, he hasn't gone off with his legs here tonight, but he can scare you enough. Watch the tight end here, Jerome Jackson, who's going to catch the touchdown. That's Peyton Wilson right across from him. Should actually get a piece of him just to knock him off his route. Don't let him release free. And then over the cornerback is for Cecil Powell. It, that's his, his coverage, but he's got his eyes on the backfield. He's afraid that Willis is going to tuck it and go and doesn't even pay attention to the route run right behind him. And it's as easy as it gets. Duffy is trailing from his safety spot. That's just way too easy. And it's, it's all eyes, Peyton Wilson included, on Malik Willis, worrying that he can tuck it and go at any time. 
and they forget about Jerome Jackson, and it's costly because Liberty, 8-0, trying to make it 9-0, and Raleigh just went up on NC State. First catch of the game for Jerome Jackson, second TD grab of the year for Jackson and the second one of the night for Willis, who now has 17 on the season. Knight decides to stay in the end zone. On the kickoff, 7-11 to go in our third quarter. The Liberty Flames, 2-8 and eight all time against the ACC, but both of those victories coming this season at Syracuse in October. That was their first win against an ACC opponent, and they followed up with the win against Virginia Tech on November 7th, 38-35. Their numbers were more impressive rushing, especially in those games, James, because tonight, rush yards, they only have 96 to this point. They rolled up 338 rushing yards in the win at Syracuse. Chance for NC State to respond, and this is Knight. Oh, and there come some more flags. Gosh, guys. After the player is out of bounds, personal foul, number 14 on the offense. The penalty is, correction, the foul is unsportsmanlike conduct, number 14. That's his first unsportsmanlike foul. The penalty is half a distance to the goal. The down counts is second down. Cedric Stone was the Liberty player, making sure that the officials <laughs> saw that there was some contact. So Rooks with an unsportsman like Stone has the interception in the second quarter for Liberty. If I'm not mistaken, I, I know there have been, I think, eight penalties now, maybe nine on NC State, and four of them of the 15-yard variety. And I mean, just, I don't know what Porter Rooks would be thinking. It's, you're fighting, trying to scrap back and, and win this football game. You, you can't do stuff like that. Hockman's pass on the money. Down the sideline, Emeka Emezi in stride for Emezi. Welcome to the football game, Emeka Emezi. Boy, here's Hawkman with a little bit of time and the lefty. Let's pick Emeka Emezi, just run his route and run right by the corner. The safety, rather, Marcus Haskins. Beautifully thrown football, good catch by Emezi. 55 yards on the play, a flag is out. Paul Starr, offense number 19, five-yard penalty, first down. I mean, you know, Doran shaking his head, that's all you can do is, you know, and you just get the big hitter on him, and now you're going to go put it on him with the tempo. You've got him gassed a little bit. Instead, here comes the momentum killer, so it's first down and 15. That 55-yard pass play, the longest through the air this season for NC State. Flags are out of the run by Knight. This is going to be a hole. And now Knight starts to get into it with Butler after the whistle. Holding, offense number 56. 10-yard penalty, first down. Bryson Spees, 6'4", 304, and a junior. You see him that right tackle, and it was right out in the open, right in front of the official. It's an easy call. Working against Treshawn Clark, the sophomore from Cape Coral, Florida. 108 yards in penalties against NC State tonight as they mark that most recent one off. To the 46 of Liberty. The first down marker is at the 21 yard line. First and very, very long for Bailey Hockman. 10 of 16 and 114 yards through the air for Hockman and the one interception. Pressure's coming. Right in his grill, and Hockman goes down. Darrell Johnson with the sack for Liberty. Second of the night for the Flames. Well, Darrell Johnson. Out of Baltimore, Maryland, said when he first went to college, a junior college, they wanted to put him at linebacker. And then at defensive back, 
and they finally found his, his true position there at defensive end. He's made nothing but big plays for this team as first career interception even in the win against Western Carolina last week. Start. Offense number 88. Five-yard penalty, second down. So that's against Devin Carter. Be careful of a screen here. Got Bam Knight back there in the backfield with Hawkman. Johnson is the sack leader for Liberty now with eight on the season after that played defensively by number 11 in white. And again, that marker for a first down is at the 21 of Liberty. And there are more flags on the field. Defense number 11, five yard penalty, second down. It's Johnson again. Just had one of those early in the game, just a little, little early, jumpy, trying to get back there and get to Hawkman one more time for the sack. So it's second down and 32 here for NC State. Hawkman, who had three TD passes a week ago in the win against Florida State. Just over 400 yards of total offense in that victory. Trying to turn the corner at midfield is Knight. And he gets escorted out of bounds. Ralph Rusin's number 99 takes him out. Well, Scott Simon's defense did a good job on, on some of the adjustments there at halftime because this was an offense that was running it at will right down the throats of this defense in the first half. They've done a good job of of rallying to the football together and, and keeping those angles. What's Tim Beck got for third and 30? Pass complete near the 40-yard line. And that was Knight who made the catch. He's slow to get up. Butler was there on the hit. One late, too, and there's no flag. They want a flag here, and they remember they can always go back and add it on. So Zonovan Knight is the player down for NC State. Coach Beck halfway out on the field. Out right there taking care of his guy, and rightfully so. We will take a look at it. We're going to go to break and check back in afterwards. But look at this. Well, it doesn't look too vicious, but it hurt. Not ACC football is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. We resolve to help North Carolina stay healthy. Bojang, it's bow time. And your local Chevy deal, Georgia Drive Chevy. Carter Finley Stadium, the site of our game tonight. Liberty Flames on the road and leading 14 7 against the NC State Wolfpack. You saw that last play where Zonovan Knight was down at the tail end of the play as Butler came in to make the tackle. And then. It's Dupree that yes. comes in late. They didn't ask to look at it, to add a targeting. It, you know, he, Dupree, it, it, it didn't look like the intent was to, to hit him up there. He tried to, to pull up, but still, you know, it's something they could have looked at. Bam Knight seemed to be okay. Neck a little bit shorter, have to go out there and pull it out and, and loosen it up a little bit. So fortunately, he's all right. And here's your fourth down and 18, and Bailey Hawkman back out there on this fourth and 18 now. So from the 39 of Liberty, this is fourth and long, and they'll just do a little pooch-style punt that bounces at the 10. This is going to work out quite well. Down to the two or three. Thayer Thomas was back there. 36 yards on the Hockman punt, and they're going to put it at the three-yard line. Good job by Hawkman. You just give it a chance. So many times with that quick kick, you see a quarterback get in there and boot it too hard. Gives his receiver, in this case, a chance to get down there, get his back turned and find that football. And, of course, it's Thayer Thomas, the do-it-all guy. So there you go. So a long way to go to march it down now for Liberty and Willis. It's going to be the worst starting field position of the ball game. For the Flames. Number 21 in the nation. 8 0. 3 0 away from Lynchburg. In the end zone. Taken down. 
down. It's a safety. Isaiah Moore on the tackle of Pickett. Well, that'll change the momentum in a hurry. You get the nice play on special teams with the punt from Hockman. And now Moore put two on the board. Great job by Dave Dorn and his staff. The quick kick, nobody back there to return it, so you pin them deep. You pull it off. First it takes Hockman with the good quick kick. And then you've got slicing through there immediately Isaiah Moore. Well, take a look at it. Running on the field, the runner did not get the ball out of the end zone. The play resulted in a safety. The play is under further review. Yeah, and I think this one is absolutely going to stand. I sure hope so for Isaiah Moore on, on his behalf. Boy, is he fired up. And for good reason. There you go. Get, get a piece of that bone. There's the turnover bone. You get to sign it maybe a couple times when you get a safety. <laughs> wow. Moore was basically untouched. Right to the ball carrier picket. Watch 25 and white. Look at him. Get off the spot and just hunt him down. Excellent job to hang on and not let him free to get out of there. And if those are the only looks we have at it. You must have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, which on the field is safety. Yeah, this is Stan. Great job by Isaiah Moore, one of the top tacklers in the ACC, making a great big tackle for his football team right there after it's been kind of ugly. The last series offensively will score some points the defensively. The ruling of safety stands. So Jeff Flanagan with the official word. It's two points for NC State. How about this? Great work by our research team. Got to go back to 2010 against North Carolina for the last safety. And Isaiah Moore puts two points on the board for the junior from Chester, Virginia. And just like that, the tables have turned significantly. Sign that bone. Yeah, sign it. <laughs> he wait, I like how he waited till after the review. <laughs> you can't assume anything, especially in 2020. And for more on that turnover bone, down to Kelly Kroll on the sidelines. Yeah, guys, this is a big defensive coordinator, Tony Gibson thing. He wants dogs on his defense. Tenacious, relentless, aggressive players. And we just saw that from Isaiah Moore. And right now, when you get that takeaway bone and get to sign it, we've talked about this guy a lot tonight, Peyton Wilson. He's leading the way, but I don't know. Isaiah could be closing in on him. Yeah, back and forth, Kelly. Both those linebackers are so much fun to watch. Big play guys. We better get a few more Sharpies when you've got number one and number 11 roaming around back there. But, you know, they're, they're young up front defensively. Very young and inexperienced with the injuries and with Tanner Engel out with the targeting call in the secondary. But they're, <laughs> they're experienced and they're big time players there at the linebacker spot. Peyton Wilson, Isaiah Moore, Drake Thomas is outstanding as well. He's in the top 20 in tackles in the ACC. Three linebackers on this team, all in the top 20. Wilson, number one. Drake, brother of Thayer. Gotta love the Drake. Not on this play, though, for NC State. That'll be a loss of yardage. And that was Person on the run. Treadwell. And rudely, I might add, took him out of bounds. Minus six on the play. Yeah, how about this defense? Turned it around. Jawan Treadwell, his brother Laquan, played wide receiver for Hugh Freeze. Back at Ole Miss, pretty good football player. Junior from Creed, Illinois. Inside of three minutes to go in our third quarter. So now another third and long as Washington applied the defensive pressure. But Washington wasn't on my two deep for Liberty, but he, he certainly needs to be. He's made a bunch of football plays defensively. That one, excellent job. He's not going to get to the quarterback. Reads that screen. Good job by Scott Simon, the defensive coordinator. Have those guys ready for that screen play. Knock it down. Only two of eight on third down. Hockman needs to get more than that as he gets wrestled out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A run by Bailey Hockman. That was Dupree who took him out. And now it's fourth down. And so third down's been 
a source of problems tonight for Dave Dorn's team. Last week, James, they were 10 of 15 on third down in the win against Florida State. No such luck tonight. And inside of 2.30 to go and punting. Demario Douglas, the deep man. Trenton Gill's punt bouncing around inside the 20. And about the 18 yard line or so. Before we continue, first a message from Works. Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. Available at mylandroid.com. The future of lawn care is here. There's a 42 yard punt by Trenton Gill. So you thought maybe, James, NC State would gather some momentum from the Isaiah Moore safety. You'll take two points, but now yeah. Liberty has the ball back at the 23-yard line. Well, and the Liberty defense has, has been a completely different squad coming out of that halftime locker room. They've been aggressive as well. This NC State defense, last time they were out there with the safety, continue to hunt down this football. Willis, quick release, 30-yard line and caught. Spinning upfield for a couple of extra yards, just short of the marker on the catch by Shaw. Nine yards on the play. Kevin Shaw, the senior, makes the grab. It's been a heavy run down, first down for this team, and decided to go out there to Shaw. His first action had three catches against Southern Miss a couple weeks ago. And the win. James, how about this? Last week against Western Carolina, Shaw, who just made his first catch of the game, had two catches for 137 yards <laughs> and a receiving touchdown of 83 yards. That's a pretty good average on two snares by Shaw. Looked like Willis was a little bit short of the marker there. Yes, making sure he's a little bit short. There's a whole lot of guy. <laughs> Lee McNeil, look at him move. Boom. I mean, he was a baseball player in high school, but he wasn't like a Prince Fielder first baseman type. He was a right fielder. <laughs> I, I, I see it now, though, covering some ground. Let's see if they can do it again here on third down and one. On back-to-back -back plays, stuff them on a short yardage. Closing seconds of the third quarter, Liberty with the football. Third and short. Again. Pack getting nasty back there. That's Drake Thomas. Talked about him just a few minutes ago. Along with Peyton Wilson, Tony Gibson's defense. There's the dogs that Kelly was talking about. The dogs getting hungry here at the end of the third quarter. And it looks like Liberty will let this one run out and we'll take it to the fourth, which is exactly what Hugh Freeze told Kelly. He tells his guys each week, we want to get to the fourth. And be in it. How about Liberty taking the lead to the fourth? 14 9. Safety from the Wolfpack and Isaiah Moore. Our most recent scoring, but a third quarter touchdown to Jerome Jackson by Malik Willis. And NC State trailing number 21 of the nation. 14 9 as we head to the fourth. of what you've seen so far. It's 14-9, and the Flames are ahead of the pack. Well, the, the star of the show isn't James Bates, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm talking Peyton Wilson, Isaiah Moore, Drake Thomas. Love watching that defense go, and I love the hard-charging Bam Knight. There's a big touchdown in the first half to get the scoring going. And how about Malik Willis down low towards the end of the first half, finding Noah Friff to tie it up. And then first score of the second half, a nice touch pass, Malik Willis to Jerome Jackson. And it's 14 to seven, but after a quick kick by Bailey Hawkman, down by Thayer Thomas, Isaiah Moore cleaning things up in the end zone. A big safety, that dog will hunt. So 
NC State in that third quarter, the running game was stifled. Flames got the TD, NC State got the safety. 14-9 as we head to the fourth with the time of possession very close between these two teams. We thank you for watching the fourth. Hugh Freeze, who left the Ole Miss program after some improprieties during his time there, but a second chance as the head coach of the Liberty Flames in his second season. He's got him to number 21 in the nation, and they have the lead as we head to the fourth quarter. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Kelly crawls on the sidelines, along with our outstanding ACC College Football production crew with you from Raleigh, and that's a fair catch. Ball's on the turf there, Thomas, and he was able to cover it up. At about the 23-yard line, 46 yards on the punt from Aiden Alves. Boy, good boot by Alves, and usually sure-handed. Here, Thomas able to fall right on that one. But James, I know you didn't return punts in your day, but what's it like when you just lose the handle just a little bit? You know you've got to scramble to cover that football. Well, oh, shoot! Yeah, I mean, just from just <laughs> pickup football, you, you panic mode. You, you know. Fortunately for him, it was just kind of slipped through the hands and not off the shoulder pads or something and ricocheted. And then you have all these other guys able to get a, a try at it. Hockman has to find some room on the run, throws, and that pass had very little hope. Probably a better decision for Hockman to get that one into the bench area of Liberty, incomplete in second and ten. You know, James Bates, a national champion at Florida. Back in the mid 90s, you, you liked hitting guys a little bit more, right, than fielding punts. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. Okay. But you know, you, you talk about those teams. Uh, you know, Coach Spurrier in, in early to mid 90s. We, we didn't lose a lot of games. We won four SEC championships, what? and, and th what? that's what I was talking about with this Liberty team. Look at this; it's just a team. As, as Hockman loses a, the grip on it again, but it's when a team just knows nothing but winning. They've won 10 games in a row now. It's it. It's really infectious and you losing it isn't an option in your mind. Yeah, you know, it's it, you go up against a good team you, You're bound to get beat eventually, but you're not thinking about it ever and there's something to be said about that They lost eight two of nine on third down That play is going to be whistled dead at about the 23 yard line, which is actually the original line of scrimmage So fourth down as as we go down to Kelly and Kelly Liberty's getting it done so far They are and you know I Coach Freeze, if he remembered a game or a moment where this team really did start to believe. And he mentioned last year with the Buffalo win. Buffalo coming off that undefeated season. Mac champions, they've lost their first two games. He was in the hospital, guys, remember? Couldn't really do much those first two games. But when they beat that team, they really went on a roll. And then, of course, even made it to a bowl game last year. And ever since then, the momentum carrying into this season and so on. Absolutely. It was a good Buffalo team, a team that had just won the Mac and went on to win. Uh, be co-champs of the Mac that year. Douglas will stay away from the punt from Gill. And a little backspin at the 33-yard line. So that's where Liberty takes over. With 13-24 to go in the fourth. And the Flames ahead of the pack. quarter with the Flames ahead of the pack. Malik Willis will lead that offense out onto the field. He was just 4 of 13 through the air in the first half, but 5 of 7 so far in the second half of the TD pass in the third quarter of 6 yards to Jerome Jackson and Willis now with 17 TD passes on the season. Also has 9 rushing touchdowns, which is tied for first in the nation among quarterbacks. Closing in on the single season school record for rushing yardage as well. What a year it's been for Malik Willis and his Liberty teammates trying to make it 3 0 against the ACC. That appeared to be somewhat of a route miscommunication to Shedro Lewis. That'll stop the clock with 13.21 to go in our fourth quarter. 
And with Shedro Lewis dangerous, we saw him on the kick return earlier, try to turn on those wheels. You, you mentioned earlier that Kevin Shaw and the, the big week he had against Western Carolina last week, those are the kind of numbers Shedro Lewis had against Syracuse. He had 10 runs for 170 yards, the former wide receiver. They converted the running back. So dangerous when he gets the ball in his hands, but Malik Willis, the accuracy off early in this game and coming back right there. Not very pretty. Willis throws back towards the receiver and a sliding grab from Douglas. 14 yards and a first down as the chains roll up the field after the 14-yard play. Here's the scramble to throw that Willis is so good at. On the fly, he zipped him in there just like that touchdown earlier at the end of the first half to Frith. And an excellent job by Demario Douglas to go down and make sure that ball didn't come anywhere near the grass. The redshirt freshman from Mandarin High School. Second catch for Douglas, 31 yards receiving for him. He is one of six different receivers that the Liberty quarterback, Malik Willis, has hit. We'll try the run game for a modest gain up near the Tuffy logo in midfield of the 48-yard line. James, you were talking about that Syracuse game. Liberty ran it 48 times for 338 rushing yards against the Orange in that first win against an ACC team, and they followed that up with the win at Virginia Tech on November 7th. Yards a lot harder to come by against this defense. There you saw Peyton Wilson at the end of that play just trying to rip that football away. Offensively, you've got to secure it extra tight every single time you run the ball because they're going after it right now, and it's been an offense that's been prone to fumble it. Willis incomplete. Too far ahead of the receiver, Demario Douglas. Douglas coming out of that break. Lost his foot in there, covered by Shane Battle. So here's your third down and nine. And quickly over the ball, Malik Willis in this offense, ready to go. Four for ten on third down. This is third and nine. Into the eyes of the Liberty quarterback. Trying to convert on third down. Those edges will bend in. Willis escapes. Now he falls and hits the turf. Lost the footing at the 39-yard line. Willis down to the third down play. And that's a loss of eight for Liberty. Well, no rain here in Raleigh today, but a couple of the, the snap mishandles by Bailey Hogman on the other side. And... You know, a couple defensive backs losing their footing. Here, Malik Willis, it's, there's a wet feel in the air, but it's it's not like it's muddy, sloppy conditions. Thayer Thomas needs to make sure he secures this football on this punt return. Had some trouble with it last time. Alvis gets it away. Thomas, 25-yard line. Tripped up at the 30. 37 yards on the punt, six on the return. Benjamin Alexander made the special teams tackle for the Liberty Flames. When we come back, Bailey Hockman from the NC State Wolfpack on the field. Fourteen nine, Dave Dor Dave Doran's team trailing with 11:03 to go. The lack of productivity here in this second half after 210 yards of total offense in the first half. These numbers just don't add up in the second half, James, and they all end in punt. And I believe when it's all said and done, it's about 24 yards in the second half. Total. Dave Dorn pacing back and forth on that sidelines. And the big dogs right there. Hill, Witt, Skolto, Icky. I mean, it's, it, it blows me away that they haven't dominated in this second half. I, I thought that they had worn down this Liberty defense in the first half, and they certainly had, had run it whenever they wanted to and however far they wanted to. It seemed like a first down every time there for a while when Bam Knight touched the football. But hats off to this Liberty defense. They've stiffened. But this offensive line needs to step up and protect their quarterback and open some holes again in the run game in this drive. Design roll and throw for Hockman near the 40 incomplete. And the receiver was Devin Carter. Just to support your point, James, NC State had 156 yards rushing at the half. 
They now have 130. So this half has been negative on the ground for NC State. 263 total yards after the incompletion. They had 210 at halftime. Hockman to throw again. Little shovel forward. Person. 40-yard line. First down. And out of bounds near the 45. Four stop by Javon Scruggs. 15 yards on the play. Wow, nifty little play, too. I like it. Person sits in there, acts like he's going to block. You get all those linebackers committing on that second level, and it's off to the race's third level before he gets stopped. Hawkwind to throw again over the middle. And that ball's bouncing away on the turf. The receiver was Porter Rooks. It's a, it's a secondary that's really stepped up in this second half as well. And just going after, uh, aggressively going after these footballs. There's Javon Scruggs one more time, knocking the ball down, second down and 10. They're breaking on the ball and contesting all these throws. Hawkman through the progression. Nothing available. Does a semicircle back the other way, plants and throws, and there's nobody there. Closest receiver was a Mecca Amezi. You'll recall he had that 55-yard catch in the first half, longest pass play of the game for NC State. But really, that's the only grab from Amezi James for those 55 yards. Yeah, I mean, it's, it just, it, it seems like such a waste. I mean, you look back at that pit game, he had seven catches, the two touchdowns, including that game winner, and, and only have one grab in a game this tight right now and just where you'd think physically you just dominate guys like Devin Carter and Emeka Mesa. Let's we'll see if they come in big here on a third down and 10 needed. Whistle stops play. There is a flag out at the 45. Ball start. Offense from the 50. Five yard penalty. Third down. 118 yards in penalties for NC State tonight. Lose the, the ball back five yeah. yards to the 40. Please. You mentioned that game, James, at Pitt, which was ranked at the time in early October, a 28-24 win please reset the game clock for NC State. Please. Three games this season decided by four points or fewer, and the 118 nice. in penalty yardage, and that'll be the most this season. That's a stat you don't want. Dumps it over the middle. On the run. Caught. Past the 45-yard line. Wow. Scruggs coming across there like TLC. I don't want no Scruggs. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, he was getting after it. Anthony Smith on the grab for the Wolfpack. But now it's fourth and nine, so Trenton Gill has to come out to punt. Liberty was so dominant in that game against Western Carolina, they did not punt at all. And had 633 yards of total offense. Stepping it up in competition this week against NC State. Douglas wants that fair catch and makes it successfully at about the 18-yard line. 37 yards on the punt from Trenton Gill. So James, nine and a half minutes to go on the fourth. And Liberty, which appeared to struggle for most of the first half until that late score. And that really seemed to spur them on because they came out and scored in the third quarter as well. And here we are, 14-9 with nine and a half to go. Or would they like to get a little something going? If nothing else, just flip the field. A little bit better field position. Willis puts some touch on this one, floating it down near the 45-yard line and incomplete. Running back there was Noah Frith. He's got the TD grab from the second quarter. Shaheem Battle trying to go stride for stride with Frith. Well, I like it again on first down. Trying to go up top and be aggressive. Nice job by Battle. Not have to fall for that inside cut there, stride for stride. A little bit too strong, so here's your second down and 10. Noah Frith, just a sophomore, has got a big, bright future ahead of him. He's been fun to watch here in this game. Willis now 10 of 24, 118 yards and two TD passes. Trying to use the feet and legs this time and 
forced out near the 20. Yeah, right at it by Peyton Wilson. Just two yards on the scamper and scramble from Malik Willis. Wilson shaking that hand off. You know, Wilson, yeah, it doesn't come across as some of those great big plays that we've seen him make every single weekend. But it shows how good of a linebacker he is, how good of an athlete he is. The fact a couple times tonight he's taken that proper angle and he's run down Malik Willis. A lot of teams and a lot of ACC linebackers have struggled with doing just that here this season. Let's see if they can shut him down on a third down and eight now. Four of 11 on third down. This pass at the 25 is intercepted. A diving interception from Aiden White. What a play, and he gets mobbed by his teammates. Second pick of the game for NC State. Hit him the bone. Boy, the freshman. We talk about the youth in this secondary. Look at him, make that break. I snap that head around, goes and undercuts it. Intended receiver was Kevin Shaw. Fantastic job by Aiden White. Freshman from Asheville, North Carolina, up in the mountains. Now, what are you going to do with it? Bailey Hawkman will try to put it in the paint and retake this lead. See what you got. It's Knight with a short run for two yards. I, I still I, I still can't believe that they have had so much trouble running the football in the second half. First career interception for White. Best field position of the night, obviously, and now Knight with a run on second down. He got three, so the ball's at the 21-yard line, and they need to get to the 16. As Treadwell and Scruggs are there for the tackle. Just two of 11 on third down of the game for NC State. They were fifth in the conference to start the night at 45% in this particular situation. And now third and five. Hockman pressured, got away. Can't run for that first down. He does. Hockman bounced out of bounds near the 11-yard line by Johnson. 11 yards on the run and a first down for the pack. Wow, they brought the heat. Defensive backs with their backs turned. Hartman taking advantage of it. Nice decision to tuck it and go. Watch out for Knight James down at the five-yard line. Number seven already has a rushing TD in this game of 19 yards. He got seven on that run. Six TDs on the ground this season for Knight. That into the end zone and incomplete. Looking for Angeline. Well, and he was covered. Good job by Aaron Pierre, the linebacker underneath. You know, as a linebacker, it's so easy when you go back to back, big hitters on the ground game, and you know that Bam Knight's there just chomping at the bit to get it and lunge into the end zone. Just pin your ears back and try to go stop the run. You forget about the pass. That wasn't the case there. Good job to be awake and find Angeline. Here's your third and three now. Can get a first down at the one-yard line. Up the middle, into the end zone for the touchdown. Bam Knight slams it in from four yards away for NC State. So they're able to turn the interception from Aiden White, the first of his career for the freshman, into points thanks tonight. Yeah, and they'll keep him out there because one point doesn't do anything for you. A one-point lead or a two-point lead doesn't matter, but it sure would make a big difference here if they can add on two to where a field goal would tie it. There's a big two-point conversion there. Remember, it was end of the game, the Barbier kick that won it against Virginia Tech for Liberty. 
Hockman rolls the pocket, comes back the other way. This is a lineman. Ekwanu. 79, Iki Ekwanu. That might be just a little too creative. Maybe, James, but they miss out on the two-point conversion. Doesn't matter. The interception by Aiden White. First of the year for the freshman. And then Knight takes it into the end zone from four yards away. It's a one-point lead for NC State. So the pack with a one-point lead. They tried to go for two. You see the discussion from Dave Dorn and offensive coordinator Tim Beck. Well, they got the ball in the end zone thanks to Zonovan Knight. This from four yards away. Okay. I like that one. Second TD rush of the night for Knight. And here's the two-point try, James, involving the lineman. Yeah, Icky Ekwanyu, the tackle eligible. You're going to throw it back to him and... I mean, that's, it just seems to me like that's something you do when, when you're up and you want to take care of your big guys. And But, you know, hey, thought they had something, but they didn't. They didn't because it was a well-coached Liberty team that snuffed it out. I mean, the hat's off to Simon's defense. Lewis corralled at the 15. 15 yards on the return. Good hustle down there by Penix. Penix, you know, gets gets lost. He's, he's an outstanding running back from right here in Raleigh. And Ricky Person and Bam Knight, they get a lot of the carries. You've got some guys waiting in the wings like Houston and Penix. So you get involved. You get on the field and contribute however you can. And special teams is a great way. So a nice job of hurrying down there and making Liberty go a little bit further as they'll start it at the 16. Be interesting to see what kind of tempo they come out with here as they'll run it right up the gut on the first snap. Or I'll just let it eat away here and, until they get a first down. Maybe some herky jerky start and stop, but Malim McNeil. Big dude provides a lot of shade on sunny days. Just two yards on the play. You'll recall McNeil at Virginia had that interception return for a touchdown of 18 yards they affectionately call the thick six <laughs> in this part of the country 6 2 2 30 uh, 220 rather careful the quarterback draw here it's a big play when they empty everything out it's a long pass near midfield was that intercepted yes sir back to grab it isaac duffy interception number three on the night for NC State. And Willis hadn't thrown a pick in his previous four games. Wow, well, how about the break by Isaac Duffy, the sophomore, former walk-on. He had never played a defensive snap until Harris was ejected for targeting in the Duke game. Played 68 snaps in that game and watched him secure this football, knowing he's going to get his feet cut out from underneath him. Great focus, and what a big play for this Wolfpack football team. Isaac Duffy, go sign that bone. Starting to get a lot of ink on that turnover bone now. So Duffy with his first interception of the season for the sophomore from Binghamton, New York, and he now becomes the eighth different player to get an interception for the pack this year, led by Wilson with two. Four yards on the previous play, call it second and six, 540 and counting in the fourth. NC State has forged ahead thanks to Zonovan Bam Knight, the sophomore from Bailey, North Carolina, and Southern Nash High School. TD runs of 19 and four, and Bailey Hockman, who has taken over control of this program after the injury to Devin Leary in the win against Duke. Person, midfield, four yards. And now that clock, certainly a friend and ally of NC State and offensive coordinator Tim Beck and head coach Dave Doran 
It is third and short, four of 13, but two of three in the fourth, and they got a couple of clutch conversions. On that previous drive, Hockman scampered for one after the interception by the freshman Aiden White, which they turned into points. Three picks in the game, NC State. Liberty is pointing at the NC State line. Two flags at least. Ball start. Offense, number 56. Five-yard penalty. Third down. The clock will start on my signal. Well, it's a good thing Dave Doran has a mask on tonight. We can't read his lips, what he's saying under there. That's the 14th penalty now of the night. 123 penalty yards against the Wolfpack. That moves it back to third and seven. They need the 48 of Liberty for the first down. Hockman out of the shotgun, backs it up. Over the middle, that ball's bouncing around. Incomplete near the 45-yard line. Incomplete to Carter. And it's now fourth down for NC State. Marcus Haskins defensively for Liberty. And they stand strong. Well, Haskins has been all over this field defensively. Does a good job there. The ball looked like it. it was a catchable ball by big body Devin Carter, but still just scrapping hard and giving their offense one more chance. Plenty of time and three timeouts left for both of these teams. It was Trenton Gill needs to get a big old boot right here. We saw him 59 yard earlier. Liberty in the midst of the best season in school history. 47 yards on the punt as Douglas has the fair catch. They're going to spot that ball at about the eight-yard line. So Malik Willis, who'd only thrown one interception all season, has three tonight, but they've got the ball trailing by one. The pack by a point with 4-12 to go in the fourth. Liberty has the football, and it's time for our big bow moments presented by Bo Jangles. Oh, a big moment for a young man. Aiden White, first interception of his career. Excellent job there, and here's another first. Interception this time by the safety coming over there, Isaac Duffy. Wow, some big turnovers by this Wolfpack defense here tonight, and some young pups, if you will, getting in on the turnover bone action. Let's see if they can do it one more time. Maybe even two more times with three timeouts left, but there's a look at the last five possessions by this flame offense. Not pretty here recently in the second half, but you've got a very dangerous quarterback in Malik Willis and plenty of time. Look at that rush yardage total, negative one. Second half for Liberty. The other interceptions from Jakeem Harris. And both teams have seven points off turnovers. That's 59 points off turnovers this season for Liberty. They're on offense from their own eight. Willis. Incomplete near the 20. Leaping attempt from C.J. Daniels. It almost feels like Willis is comfortable, James, rolling to his right but throwing to his left. We've seen him do that quite a bit tonight. It's just the athletic ability of the young man that he's able to even pull that off at times against this NC State defense. Low scoring game. That pass completed to 15. It's first down yardage. 23 yard line or so for Johnny Huntley. 14 yards on the play. Well, Huntley, the transfer from Colorado, has been quiet tonight, making some noise at the right time for his team. He had the big game at Virginia Tech. 240-pound senior moving those chains and giving some breathing room. Second catch for Huntley. Again out to his right. Willis will tuck. Tiptoe that sideline and go out of bounds. They marked him out just short of the 30-yard line, forced out by Isaiah Moore, and six yards on the run for Willis. James, these are two high-scoring offenses that have been limited tonight. Hugh Freeze's team averages over 40 points per game. 
NC State averages 33 and a half points per game. This a long pass near the 40, swatted away, and it is a clean play. Back there defensively to defend Kevin Shaw was Tyler Baker Williams. I like Tyler Baker Williams. He does a good job here not to draw the flag he's beaten, but he, he plays catch up, good recovery speed, and then he watches the eyes of Shaw. That receiver's eyes are gonna get big, those hands are gonna go up, snaps that head around and knocks it away to force a third and four. Good job, 13. Let's see what they've done on third down tonight. This is a big one. And they're going to get it at the 35-yard line and more up near the 40-yard line. The catch made by C.J. Daniels as he turned it upfield. 12 yards on the play. Liberty first down. Well, it breaks it off on battle right at those sticks. Again, you got to know where they're, they're running those routes, where they're going to move those chains. Be aware of where you are on that field and what the offense is trying to do. Nice pitch and catch for the Flames. Fresh set of downs. Pick it. He's rudely spun down by Peyton Wilson. Six yards on the play for Pickett. Man, Peyton Wilson, he, he arrives angry when, when he gets to that ball carrier, no matter who's carrying the football. We saw him in that Duke game. He had about 20 tackles in that Duke game a few weeks ago. Second down play. Willis trying to extend it, and then he just throws it into his own bench. Wise play by the veteran quarterback. Looks like Wilson was there again, James. Yeah, he's, he's mean. It's like Mr. Wilson and Dennis the Menace. Remember how mean he was to Dennis the Menace? <laughs> Third Eight and four. A lot of hustle. Got to keep on going. Make a couple more plays. Find a way to shut him down. Got to get to the 49 of NC State. A whistle will stop the development of this play. I'm out. I'm out. North Carolina State. First charge timeout. NC State has taken the timeout. It's their first with 2.27 on the clock. Wow. Close and competitive. One point game. And Kelly's got more on Peyton Wilson. Well, guys, there's probably nobody rooting harder for NC State and Peyton Wilson tonight than his older brother, Bryce, who's a starting pitcher for the Braves. And I have to go back to October when he made headlines. You guys might remember going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clayton Kershaw through six innings of one-run ball. That's Bryce Wilson. So the athletic DNA runs in the family. But check this out. His family, after watching that outing, turns around the next day to come back and watch Peyton, who had 19 tackles and two and Interceptions against Duke. You talk about a big weekend for the Wilson family, and I love it because he dedicated that win to his brother. And Bryce said, I could not be more happy for him and proud of him. It, it made me tear up listening to him. See what he and his defensive teammates can do on third and four with 2.27 on the clock for Liberty. Got to get to the 49 of NC State. Was there movement along the line? A flag is out. Here's the pass inside the 30. And hauled in Noah Frith. Uh, the flag is going to be just offsides on the defense. So it won't matter. It'll be declined. A free play. Boy, did they take advantage of it. Offside. Defense number 99. The penalty will be declined. The play will run for that first down. Here's the jump. And you know, it's it's one thing to just throw it up there when you got a free play. But, but go where you're going, they're gonna go anyway and have success and a nice little underthrown ball to Frith. It was just made big play after big play here in this game as they go after Cecil Powell. And look at this. Down into field goal position. And then Alex Barbier, who's hit eight of his last eleven. And the game winner of Virginia Tech, maybe he'll get a shot or Willis and company hoping they can get it into the end zone. How about Frith, James? Four catches, 73 yards. That's a career high as they go to the ground. Frith, by the way, number 81 in white, came into this game with just seven catches for 92 yards, and he's been one of the stars of the offense. For Liberty with those four catches. And that last one went for 27 yards before that previous play. 
How about the tenth play of the drive coming up? Well, we, we heard Kelly ask Hugh Freeze about the, the tempo, the turtle or the turbo, and they're happy as can be with the the turtle momentum right now. Let it tick all the way down, either way of that clock. They're in it in the fourth quarter, late in the fourth quarter, that's for sure. Second down rush. Just a yard for Shedro Lewis. NC State's taking a timeout. We're looking at Alex Barbier, the senior from Alpharetta, Georgia, and a transfer from Penn State. As James mentioned, he hit that wild 51-yarder as the game winner with six seconds left against Virginia Tech. And this was an amazing sequence. Virginia Tech had blocked his first attempt, but there was a timeout called. And so on fourth down, they got the fourth down play, got Barbier closer, and then to a 51-yard field goal attempt, and he made it. And that was his career long until a 54-yarder he made last week against Western Carolina. He's 9 of 14 this season. As James mentioned, he's made eight of his last 11. Well, and prior to that Virginia Tech kick, as long as 41. <laughs> Might have a chance to do it again and make Hugh Freeze and Liberty here in 2023 and 0 against ACC teams. They've already beaten Syracuse and Virginia Tech. Now they're going to give it a try here to beat NC State. Third and six. Tried the left side and the ball carrier was tripped up. Looked like Sabian Jackson was the first man to make contact. Taking down Shedro Lewis. And NC State has taken a timeout with 1.24 to go. It's now fourth and five. And for more on Barbier, here's Kelly. Yeah, guys, it's really been a long and emotional journey for Alex Barbier. You mentioned that 51-yard field goal against Virginia Tech. He spent two seasons at Penn State, only attempted five kickoffs as he battled injuries. One of them required hip surgery, forcing him, honestly, to really give up on his dream of kicking. He transferred to Liberty, said he just wanted to live a normal life as a student, get a job, move on. But when Flames starting kicker Alex Prober announced he was transferring in February, you better believe the wheels started turning for Liberty. And long snapper Austin Mock actually had his cell phone number. So coordinator, special teams coordinator Tanner Burns reached out immediately. And, well, the rest is now history. Absolutely, Kelly. And a little bit more pressure here. That Virginia Tech game, that was tied. This one you miss. A good chance you're going to lose this football game. He's got to hit it. Barbier from 39 yards away. It's blocked. NC State blocks the field goal attempt from 39 yards away by Barbier. Small amount of fans inside this stadium making a lot of noise after this block kick. Look at Peyton Wilson. Look at Peyton Wilson, the hustle. I don't know that he got it. 31, it looks like, is going to jump up. If it's not Wilson, it's Third. Levi Jones, who's blocked a couple punts already this season, and there's no timeout, unlike that Virginia Tech game, to save Hugh Freeze's team. No do-overs here in Raleigh. Three timeouts left for Liberty, but they're going to run this football. If it was by Jones, James, you mentioned the two block punts. He had one at Virginia and one against Duke on this field. Sure does look like the right hand of number 31, doesn't it? Absolutely. Timeout. Levi Jones has been a kick blocking machine. The junior from Austin, Texas, who started his career at USC. Correction, please set the game clock to 114. 114, please. Timeout will be 30 seconds. Trying to seal the deal here in Raleigh in an interesting game. 15 to 14. I, I don't know that I saw this one coming. This is a. NC State team, Tim Beck, they had been lighting up the scoreboard offensively. Quite a change from last year. 
And you look back, they scored 41 points against Miami. And Malik Willis then lighting up the scoreboard as well in this offense. The hard fought battle back and forth. James, this is probably going to be their fourth game decided by four points or fewer. They had been two and one in those games. That's night on the rush. That's first down yardage. And that'll do it. Wow, how about Knight? Bam Knight got the scoring started. And to finish this game with hard runs like that, he's He's at 96 yards, James, on 14 carries and a couple of TD runs for Knight of four yards in the fourth quarter and 19 yards in the second quarter. And it looks like NC State is about to survive Liberty. Give me Liberty. And tonight, the victory belongs to Dave Doran and NC State. It was not easy, James Bates. Not easy in the least. But they can celebrate on those sidelines. Doran with both of his coordinators. There's Tony Gibson. Is it more of a sigh of relief, James, or a little bit of both? Harder to win as well. Hey, I hate to be that parent. Oh, it's 2020. Oh, it's 2020. But it is 2020 after all. And a win is a win. And it's been tough for 10 games in a row. Nobody could find a way to beat Hugh Freeze's team, including two ACC teams. But dropping their first one going back into late last season. Liberty, here on the road, they, they fought hard, but they ran into a, a heck of a defense here at NC State tonight. So the Wolfpack are gonna string together consecutive home wins. And Liberty will not use that final timeout, and that's gonna do it. And the pack can celebrate. Doran and Freeze with some fine sportsmanship at midfield. And Coach Doran's team with the 15-14 win against the number 21 team in the nation. So now they're two and three against ranked opponents this season with wins at Pittsburgh. And now the win against number 21 Liberty at home to improve the home record to three and one for NC State. James, that was a lot of fun. Liberty came in here and would not be denied until the very end when Knight took it down for the winning score from four yards away, and that proves to be the difference, 15-14. Uh, absolutely, and you know what? Uh, hats off to, or visors off to the visor guy as the head ball coach calls him, Hugh Freeze, for, for quite a run and, and a, a nice competitive game, bringing his guys, Malik Willis and company, in here against Dave Doran's bunch. And NC State was staying alive and making it two in a row after they had lost a few in a row. Yeah, they've they got some things they got to clean up, though, Tom. They, they, the penalties, they just they can't have that the rest of the way. They need to get back to work and, and just play some crisp football because it's a it's a fun, fun football team to watch when they're fighting hard. They're scrapping on that offensive line, running the football, and defensively, this is a fun defense to watch. Isaiah Moore, Peyton Wilson, and company. You know there's an ear-to-ear -ear grin under that mask for Dave Dorn as he celebrates with the limited amount of fans allowed into the stadium tonight. And they saw a fantastic ball game start to finish. Took Liberty a little bit of time to get some traction. NC State, that running game went away a little bit in the second half. But in the end, the two rushing TDs by night are the difference. And NC State gets the win against a ranked Liberty team. It's first loss of the season. So now James Liberty is 8-1 on the season. 3 and 1 away from Lynchburg, Virginia, and NC State is now 6 and 3. 5 and 3 in conference play, play as they stepped out of conference against the Flames and it was the blocked field goal. Vi Jones number 31 got a hand on it, James. And NC State comes away with the victory. For James Bates and Kelly Crow and our outstanding ACC College Football Production Crew, I'm Tom Wormy. Saying so long from Raleigh, North Carolina, it's the pack on top of the flames by one.